Hello there and welcome in everyone to today's Swiss round two match between Etchy, Headstrong, and Aspect. And round two has been exciting so far. I don't see any reason why today's match will be any different. I'm T-Pat. I am joined by Kerbis. Kerbis, how are you? And I mean, are you as hyped as I am to see oh. this match with our defending champion? I'm super excited for this one. As soon as I saw this matchup get drawn, I was like, I need to be on that commentary. These are three of my favorite players to watch in this game. They're all, they're some of the most consistent runners, I think, out of everyone who is in this tournament. Um, Headstrong's been popping out a bunch of 303 and better times lately. Aspects just PB'd this morning with a low 301. And Etchy is, I feel like, just the model of consistency. Mm -hmm. In fact, this is oh. This is almost like the rematch of last year's finals match because Etchy and Headstrong were both finalists in the 2023 tournament. Uh, Amber, the only one missing from that. So we welcome Aspect, uh, who is enjoying his Monday morning in Australia already. So when we say that he PB'd this morning, it was really last night for him. <laughs> oh, good point. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm in the, uh, just the a, Eastern time zone state of mind. Yeah. <laughs> so wherever you are watching and viewing from around the world, we wish you either a good evening, a good morning, a good midday, or a good night to you. But hopefully you're going to stay up with us for the next three hours. Uh, just a word of note, uh, there is the notorious etchy delay. So while it looks like he's already behind, uh, we are going to account for the time discrepancy here. Uh, so Aspect is the first underway. Uh, looks like Headstrong is just a couple of seconds behind on the feed. And Etchy is going to be about 18 seconds behind overall. So while it looks a little desynced uh, on the feed, don't worry. Their times will be accounted for accordingly. But yeah, this has been an exciting tournament so far. In fact, the, the new format has really spiced up round two pretty significantly. Because, Kerbis, if you remember, last year we did the modified double elimination format. And uh, it really didn't get super, super interesting until about round three when we finally got like all the top players merged and matched up together. But this, with the Swiss rounds, everybody who won last time out are already facing each other in this round so this is why we're getting such really intense matches round two and i actually really love this format with the swiss rounds now yeah i'm a big fan of this format um we're getting matches like this and the one that you participated in this morning that are just bloodbaths top runners all the way across the board and then even going further down like people who lost their first round races are matched up with each other so it's still an even match. It might not be as good of times in those races, but you're going to see much closer races in this round in particular. And then that's that's only going to continue. But yeah, the it's going to make for good races in every single round, which I really love. And we're, I think it's still going to give us a chance to see the best runners making it into the semifinals. I don't think it's really unfair to anybody. It's just a good setup all the way around. Yeah, I agree. And obviously it gives everybody a chance to participate in four rounds minimum if they do want to go all the way through round four and just try to accumulate that experience. And what I noticed even from last year to this year is how competitive the midfield is. Uh, you're talking about people that are on two match points. Uh, for example, uh, JT, Fury, and Ergo, who had their match earlier today, they were they all got second place in their round one matches. And you're talking people who are still capable of getting 303s, 302s, and even 301s, and they're in the midfield. So pretty much anything goes when it comes to this tournament because the skill level has improved. The depth of good players has improved so greatly. That's what's really blown my mind in the past 12 months. Yeah, I think last year's tournament really motivated a lot of people to either start playing this game or just improve their times. And over the last year, we've seen probably the most activity we've ever seen in this game. And it's resulted in a great just pool of players for this tournament. So this is almost like the the true tournament. Last year was just the warm up. <laughs> last year, the warm up tournament. This year, the true tournament. 
I, I like to hear that. Uh, so the match that we have in front of us is like the third out of the three top grouping of matches. I don't want to call it like the upper bracket because that's not what it is. Uh, but we had nine players on three match points. And the first two of those races have already completed, uh, obviously, earlier today. Saiyan got a sub three in the race. If you didn't see that, uh, Saiyan winning now the round two race, uh, defeating myself and Etiquette in that one. Uh, and then yesterday, it was Amber who won with a 301 over Headbob and Randall. Though, uh, from, from chat, they've been saying Headbob wins. So, you know, it feels like everybody is kind of a winner here. But, uh, yeah such intense you i think you described it well a bloodbath and this is going to be no different all three of these runners capable of 301 or better just like off the cuff yeah like i said these three runners in particular seem to be just some of the more consistent players you don't really see them putting up times much slower than like 305 ever so that's what you could pretty much expect for this race so we got Echi and Aspect on the Pika side of things. Be curious to see if either wants to check their nature. Of course, one of the things that we know is that if the Pikachu displays 27 CP, they actually know that it's a neutral nature. And if it's 26, it has some kind of uh, other nature. And then you don't have to check anyways. Uh, as for Headstrong, she is on the EV side of things. Uh, always displays as 27 CP, so you actually can't tell. I don't think any of the runners actually checked their nature. So in this case, they're just going to roll with whatever they've got, uh, whether they have the backup save or not. Uh, yeah. I think Aspect was joking with us earlier, just before we went on. Could, <laughs> could he get a fifth straight minus attack Pikachu? Because it seems like he's just been on that kind of streak recently. Yeah, that PB from um, earlier for Aspect. Um, they were telling us they had a minus attack Pikachu for that. So definitely comfortable <laughs> running with bad natures. I would expect all three of them are. So I wouldn't I wouldn't expect to see any backups here. So Kerbis, you're you're more experienced on the Pikachu side of things. So like how bad is minus attack? Because Pika runners always say like, oh, I got plus attack. That's like the best. So is it yeah. like detrimental to have minus attack on that same coin? It's not that bad. There's only, I would say two points where it really even matters at all. Um, one, the first section being Cerulean and Nugget Bridge. That's kind of the, the point where your level can vary by so much. And then there's just, a, even with a normal Pikachu, there's a lot of ranges in that section that you got to get a little lucky with unless you're over leveled. So being minus attack just makes all those ranges worse. Um, but it doesn't do anything too catastrophic. You might just have an extra turn here or there. And then the other scary part for a minus attack Pikachu would be in uh, the game corner when you're fighting Giovanni. Uh, it takes a lot to take down his Rhyhorn. They have to go plus six and use Helping Hand from a, a Nido King or a Nido Queen normally. So if you're minus attack and you're only level 27 or 28 for that fight, you could run into trouble and that Rhyhorn will kill you if you don't kill it first in one shot. So I'm that's trying to think of... Oh, I was going to say, I was trying to think of what the answer would be on the other side, uh, on the EV side. And minus attack and minus special attack both have their disadvantages. Uh, but it ultimately comes down to if you hit all the ranges, like you might be able to get away with it. Yeah. Uh, and the easiest way to get away with it is to just have a high experience run because experience is just the be all end all on the EV side where if you're level 30 going into like ending rocket hideout, it really doesn't matter if you're minus attack or minus special attack. You're probably just going to not notice it all that much, but it, it just gets amplified if you're minus in one of those stats and you have bad experience. Uh, Headstrong got a little unlucky, did get paralyzed from the rival Pikachu right off the bat. Uh, so lagging a little bit behind. I didn't think she missed any of her moves, thankfully. Uh, so it looks like she got through the fight without too much trouble, but at minimum, you can always encounter some status lag, which is just no fun. Try to watch for aspect stats here, see what we're working with. Yeah, if they get 
another big advantage for the uh, Pikachu players is that since they technically get one extra experience point on the uh, rival fight, they get to see their level up on the youngster instead of the next one, the next battle. Okay, so it's a it's a normal Pikachu for aspect, um, no minus attack or special attack, so that's good. I saw pretty low defense. Anything. It was like nine defense at level five. That seemed kind of low. Uh, and then yeah, here we got an Etchy somewhere. side. Okay, Etchy has a really good Pikachu. I, I didn't like see where the AV attack? was, but... Oh, the AV was attack. Oh, the AV was attack, then he has plus special attack. Really? Yeah. Which is nuts. Getting plus nature in one of those and getting early AVs in the other just sets you up so nicely. We see Headstrong going for a early route to Weedle. Uh, before you enter Viridian Forest, uh, all catches get a nice little beginner bonus that's actually coded into the game. You basically have a uh, additional like 50% chance to catch a lot of these, um, like the bugs and the early route catches. Uh, so that multiplier effectively makes it so that your Pokeballs act like Great Balls. Uh, the math works out the same there. So it's a very consistent, very easy one controller catch to get early on. Um, you sacrifice just a little bit of experience, but the consistency is certainly worth it. And actually, both players could have gone for this. Uh, the only small thing is that since Headstrong did get that catch, uh, her Eevee's already level 6, so we won't see the nature until the double kick uh, t move teaching screen. The benefit here is that if you see String Shot from the Caterpie, uh, you can actually go straight into a quick attack since that is the level six move. Aspect tripping over a Caterpie here, choosing to catch it before the lower. Yeah, so first hurdle is of course the forest, the lure That's... helping to. Uh, the lure will get all those Pokemon up to level seven as they are caught, looking for glowing catches for all those experience multipliers. That's a level three Caterpie, by the way, so that's going to be Aspect taking a hit on experience and then also going to need to level that thing up seven times to turn it into a Butterfree. Not ideal. And of course, the one the one required catch for these trainers will be either Oddish or Bellsprout based on their version. Uh, the Oddish is the one that will be used in fights for Brock. and. Kerbis, can you explain how the uh, how, how much experience you want on that Oddish and what's the most optimal play there? So really anything is fine. You catch, if the Oddish is Lord, when you catch it, it'll be level seven. As long as it's higher than level seven, you shouldn't run into any issues. Um, so if you catch the Oddish after the two bugs, I typically will catch either Pidgey or Rattata on route two once you get out of the forest. But really anything to get it to level eight and you're in the clear. And Getting we often, to level 10 we often is, see a lot of best. trainers just wait to catch an Oddish on, on Route 2, where it will be level 9 instead. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes if you don't catch, or if you catch the two bugs first, sometimes it's better to just wait until you get out there, but then you run the risk of one not spawning. Pretty standard stuff here. Just. Just the bugs for now. And at this and at this point, if we do see a Bulbasaur, of course, uh, you are probably going to evolve it into Ivysaur. It's one of those yeah. it's one of those weird, like cool things. It's like to evolve or not to evolve a Bulbasaur. Because I've seen a, I've seen it go both ways. Especially like if you catch it at level three, you're probably like, oh, I'll just deposit it in that first menu. You know, no need to waste 13 levels. But it is still like a really comfortable extra catch. Okay, Aspect getting an Oddish here after the bugs, so we'll see what he chooses to do as far as catching something else potentially. Yep, and there's confirmation that Echi has a rash. Yeah, that's one of Pikachu. the absolute best natures you can get. Minus speed doesn't really hurt Pikachu at all. Pikachu's just so fast that even having a minus speed nature, you still outspeed everything. Well, that would be minus special defense. 
Because quiet is minus speed. Oh, I thought I saw minus speed was highlighted. Minus special defense is not as good. Um, but hopefully shouldn't cause any problems. Ooh, headstrong finding a Pikachu on her side. Uh, Aspect was plus special defense. I didn't see the uh, the minus on on his side. Yeah, it was something neutral as far as our purposes go. Yeah, so that was probably uh, what's the what's plus the minus defense, defense plus, plus special defense. Bella. No, it's not lax. It's whatever the opposite of that is. <laughs> Gentle. Actually catching a Kakuna. Interesting. Kakuna is an interesting one because it it's definitely like it's it's far more viable than Metapod because its circle stays in the middle of the screen and does offer quite a nice bout of experience. But sometimes it can be a little bit awkward in terms of you don't want to catch it if you have Weedle in your party because then the Weedle will level up and obviously want to evolve into Kakuna. So you have to you have to gauge where your party management is at at the same time that you're deciding to go for Kakuna. It's super situational, but it absolutely can work out. That's where I'm going for a Route 2 Bell Sprout, so this one will come at level 9. Nice little bonus here. Because at level 9, it not only is two fewer levels, but it also learns one less move because it does learn Wrap at level 8. Yeah, so actually just going to skip out on a Weedle, um, unless one is off in his face here, probably. But yeah, the uh, down, down a catch from what you would normally expect to have, so we'll see if that hurts him here. He should be fine experience-wise, but just catch count one lower than what you would expect. Yeah, and Headstrong did get a neutral EV, so easy so, peasy there. Actually, catching that glowing Pidgey there. That'll help him out for experience as well quite a bit. Um, and then Glowing nothing... Rat for Aspect. Glowing yeah. Rat is one of the best catches you can get on Route 2 because you we're, we're starting to see a lot of the top runners really migrate to going out of their way to actually catch Eradicate, especially on Route 10, because that experience is super, super valuable. So that actually frees up the early Radita catch as a super viable uh, thing to do. And to see it glowing on Route 2 can be a really juicy amount of experience. About 250 experience. So, Aspect really needed that to avoid the level 7 Oddish. Um, Etchy's mm -hmm. Oddish is actually level 10, which guarantees uh, a two-turn rock fight, assuming he doesn't get flinched. Troll? And Rash. As we head into uh, the first gym sequence, uh, you get the you get the two different strats pretty uh, thoroughly here. <laughs> Etchy just running into a Pidgey. I wonder if he'll opt to catch this. Does not. Well, he, it was he just caught one, so he. Yeah. Yeah. So you get the two very dif different strats here. Uh, for each gym has the require has a random requirement to enter. In the case of Brock's gym, it's. That you have a grass or water type Pokemon, which is always funny because there are no water type Pokemon available in the game. So that's what makes the Bellsprout, Oddish, and or uh, Bulbasaur uh, required for the for everybody to enter the gym. Oddish works out because Brock's Pokemon have super high defense, but not special defense. So that does make Oddish super valuable here. In the meantime, that's not as viable for Bellsprout, the more physical attacker with Razor Leaf instead of Absorb. So instead, the EV players just opt to, well, use the EV and use its double kick move that was taught at level 10. We'll yeah, you'll see. see the big difference here because of. So, ab can Absorb one shot the Onyx? It can. At level 9, it can. It's at level 10, it's guaranteed. So we'll see what happens with Aspect here. Okay, got lucky. Yeah, because Headbutt can flinch. Yeah, and just hit the range for the, the level 9 Absorb, so good stuff. Um, actually, we'll have a guaranteed one there for being level 10. 
Yeah, you'll see the Pika Runners get out of this fight a good bit quicker. Yeah, it's a nice theme. It's a nice theme that we see for the Pika side of things. It's that it's like Pika and friends. We get to see the Oddish. We get to see Growlithe. We sometimes get to see Kadabra. And then we certainly see Nido King, if not Nido Queen. Uh, all pick Rhyhorn. up assists. Yeah, Rhyhorn. Uh, all pick up assists for the Pika side. Whereas uh, Eevee's kind of more like, uh, Eevee's more like Wayne Gretzky. Like, just does everything, well, you know, just wants to get every single goal. I'm always curious to see what people do in the Peter shop. Some people like to adjust it for race settings. Some Keep and is normal. that is that to like buy more great balls? Okay, or... aspect buying eight great balls, which is more than I typically buy. And a so we'll see what he cuts out here. Yeah, the defense is normal. Okay, only one X attack. That's the difference there. Let less one fewer X attack in exchange for some great balls. That may be the shop that they normally do, though. I'm not sure. Everyone does things a little differently. Yeah, well, let's, let's see, see how Etsy does. does it. Yeah, it looks Etchie like also might going be doing the same thing. Balls. Uh, meanwhile, so... Headstrong did seven, which is actually even different than my shop, because uh, my shop just buys six great balls there. Aspect getting the stray manky running off into Narnia. <laughs> yeah. It's always funny to see how far those mankeys can go. Have you ever had a mankey cross these spinners <laughs> yourself? Yeah, all the time. It's the most annoying thing. Like you hop the ledge and then the mankey <laughs> runs off. Yo, yo, caffeinated child. Mankey Sandshrew. Ooh, Sandshrew <laughs> manifested. Ooh, and a Mankey for Echi, both in the same patch of grass. That excellent. Uh, Headstrong does not see an Ekans. So she will likely be the first to enter Mount Moon here. 500, five, 500 Poké Dollars for the Shiny Magic Carp. I wonder if anybody's actually got the Magikarp shiny before. That's like one of the few things. Like, I feel like I've seen it all. But that's one of the few things that I haven't seen out of anybody yet. No one's ever said, oh, I, <laughs> I bought a shiny Magikarp in the run. Uh, Etiquette saying it happened to Oro once. Well, there you go. It can happen. Let's see if Aspect gets it. I mean, so I think one of the one of the best shinies that we saw in the tournament last year that I remember was that the Snorlax appeared shiny, and that was exciting. And then, like that same week, I think one of our runners just like on their own time also got a shiny Snorlax. Um, trying to remember who it was, I think it was uh, Matt King Trubs had it, and then it was. I want to say Randall, but I feel like everything happens to Randall. <laughs> so, so I don't know if that's uh, uh, coincidental or not. Uh, now, Etchy will be catching the not shiny Magikarp. Uh, the Magikarp is one of the fastest Pokemon to catch in the run. Uh, basically, gift Pokemon are very fast because you don't go through the catching animation. You instead just get the Dex animation. Very easy stuff. So that's why the Magikarp is. Just quite simply, one of the uh, the easier things to pick up in the run instead of catching a wild one later on on the uh, Route 21. Funny enough, if you do wait to Route 21, you could get Gyarados, so it would be a two Pokemon uh, pickup. But in this case, it's just much faster to just get one. 
So as we head into the Mount Moon section, this is the first opportunity that our uh, trainers will have to get a Chansey. Uh, and Chanseys have been rare at times, but they come in bunches. Chansey awarding the most experience out of any Pokemon in the whole game. Experience being a function usually of the HP stat, and Chansey basically is only HP, and thus it is only experience. Uh, at this stage of the game, Chanseys can just be nice as long as you party manage before it just to limit your one-off level ups. It can be super useful because, uh, as I mentioned earlier, like, Eevee loves experience. Pikachu can be absolutely the same way as well. Um, and it usually helps just when you catch it. You're just over-leveled for that section of the game. Now, catching a Chansey this early in the run helps through Misty. It helps through Boat Rival. And then it kind of evens back up because usually a Chansey is about 50. 1500 experience around this section of the game whereas if you catch it on route 6 or better yet route 10 you're looking at 3500 to 5000 experience even just for normal chances and then that really bloisters that mid game or the EV's end game section of the run so we'll see if anybody will spot one of them of course rare spawns or special spawns as i should call them uh, are just a half a percent, and there it is! Aspect's got a Chansey on the screen already! Bonjour, indeed! So now it's a matter of catching the Pokemon you want, uh, on, like, your normal route, the Geodudes, the Clefairies, the, uh, the Paris, to make sure that the bugs, most importantly, are evolved. You want Butterfree and Beedrill evolved and out of your party first, before going to catch this Chansey. So that might be an excellent find as you see Aspect saw it, but then went for the Geodude immediately. And there it is, Metapod evolving to, uh, uh, leveling up to level 10, will evolve into Butterfree, and we will likely see a party manage immediately. You just want two things in your party. You want either the Pikachu and the Eevee, and the Bellsprout or Oddish. Basically, it's just those two Pokemon. Minimize the number of level ups, maximize the amount of experience that you're going to get. Yeah, Echi has a fantastic Mount Moon going. Just a very classic, very clean setup, getting uh, getting his Paris, Geodude, and Clefairy all in quick succession here. Uh, looks like the... Uh, actually, I missed if that was the Paris that he caught first, but he's got all three. Okay, Aspect very smartly also going for the Paris first, since it's already on screen. Headstrong catching. Headstrong also has a clean, uh, a clean run going and gets the double Moonstone pickup. Well done. So most of our players have likely set their time to 11.33 p.m. so the date rolls over gives him a chance for that double moonstone headstrong did get that very nicely done but yeah all three things on screen double moonstone for aspect as well and here comes that party manage there we go chancy encountered it is not glowing but will still be worth a massive amount of experience Switching over to double great balls, you got to maximize that uh, the odds of catching it. It's not guaranteed, as we found out from the earlier race. It was actually uh, it was actually my Mount Moon Chansey that broke out of two excellent throws and eventually ran. But for Aspect, oh, another breakout! Okay, the Chansey is not going to run. Instead, going to attack. So we get another throw incoming here. Misses the excellent, or remember, excellent throws. The uh, the technique, as it's called, uh, does help with the catch rate. But that one's going to get in. So this isn't going to be as much experience, unfortunately. Ends up only at 530, and missing that excellent throw basically uh, cut the amount of experience in half, in addition to it being a lower catch rate. But... Yeah, if that would have got in first ball, it would have been worth 1,500 experience, but instead, it's only 500. Still useful experience, but it's actually about on par with a glowing Clefairy 
is about what that chancy was worth. So didn't maximize the amount of experience uh, awarded, but it is still a useful catch as Aspect just sneaks around that spinner. All right, and Etchy finishing up uh, his basement sequence, headstrong, uh, already onto this bottom floor. Oh, <laughs> lots of Clefairies must be on the catch chain there. And Aspect, Aspect does find the Clefairy that was missing on his screen. Uh, nice, uh, nice pick up there to make sure to woo Joy-Con moment as those Pokeballs just went flying <laughs> in every which direction. Uh, but Aspect did remember to switch back over to Pokeballs. A nice catch there uh, because you don't want to be wasting too many Great Balls just because you had to drop a double on a Clefairy. But that's a lot of experience. Hitting 15 is super important. Uh, for all of our runners, hitting 15, especially before the Drowsy, can make that uh, a little bit easier. But, eh, as, you know, the, the Drowsy can put uh, the starter to sleep here. It's a bit more risky on the Pika side of things versus Eevee because Eevee has a much cleaner one-shot. Uh, in fact, it's guaranteed at 15, though it's 14 and 16 at worst at level 14. Uh, but that experience, again, super useful heading into this section. Level 15 is required coming out of Moon or technically going into Misty's gym as that is the next gym requirement that they are looking for. Uh, you will sometimes see some beginner runners who don't always get the maximum amount of experience uh, will have to end up uh, fighting Rival or all of Nugget Bridge first in order to hit that level 15 mark. But for these runners, they're not leaving Mount Moon if they are not level 15. And in a race setting, if they're in that position, uh, they will quite simply deal with it. But because of their experience, they're getting they're getting excellent throws. They're getting the maximum amount of experience. At worst, you fight rival first and then go into Misty's gym. But everybody is quite cleanly on their way to level 15. In fact, the Pikachu players are already there, and the Eevee is just ever so slightly behind. Uh, it is actually quite annoying uh, for Headstrong to only be at level 14 through this section of the game. And that being one of those reasons, uh, this fight, the Super Nerd, the both the Voltorb and the Magnemite are ranges. And the Magnemite is actually a particularly bad range at level 14. Uh, both can paralyze. Both have a uh, Thundershock attack that can paralyze the Eevee going into Jesse and James, which can be so severely annoying. Uh, thankfully for Headstrong, it was just confusion, and she was able to hit through. So, thankfully, that status goes away. And you don't have to worry about it going into the J&J &J fight. One of the few uh, in that first shopping that we were mentioning with Kerbis uh, earlier on, Kerbis is always interested in seeing how many of the uh, Pokeballs that the players are buying. But the one thing is that the Pikachu, or the Eevee player actually usually doesn't buy any Paralyzed Heals until the second shop of the game. So you are risking a little bit, especially when you're not quite at that level. Yeah, that's a big difference between Pikachu and Eevee. Eevee's a lot more scared of status conditions like Paralyze and Burn. A lot more opportunities for that kind of stuff to happen. But Pikachu is incapable of being paralyzed just because mm -hmm. of being electric. And there's just not really opportunities to get burned the same way as the, Eevee. The earliest Paralyze heal that you can pick up is actually just immediately outside of Mount Moon. Uh, basically, it's directly south of the exit. There's a Paralyze heal, but you kind of wish that you had access to it a little bit earlier for, uh, especially for like that super nerd fight. But the big reason why we don't see the EV players tend to go out of their way to even buy an early Paralyze heal is because we're trying to set up what's called God menu. Uh, because the because the bag menu is in these stacks of four, uh, it's super advantageous 
to have your X items appear at the very bottom right and bottom left of your inventory together. So that way both X attack and X special attack are just one input away when you need to use them. And we actually see both uh, the Pikachu and the Eevee side do this strategy and set up this God menu. It's actually, it's, it's finicky. You need to get it just right. And weirdly enough, the menu ends up the opposite for both of the players. And it just happens to be how the items are sorted as you pick them up and then use them. They end up, they end up reversed uh, for each other. So it's actually kind of funky for, uh, for, the, for the players that run both versions and have to really think about, wait, my X attack is actually an up input instead of a left input or vice versa. So here we have all the busted moves being taught. Another advantage, well, it, it, advantage both ways uh, for the Pikachu side. It's just the one move. It's just Zippy Zap that is taught. So it is only one of those conversations with the move tutor versus Eevee, which has to teach three of the moves, obviously much slower, um, but that diversity of the moves ends up being the reason why Eevee is... Uh, kind of the one trick pony. It's just, you don't need as much help because you have access to all these coverage moves that uh, effectively come from the uh, evolutions. All the evolutions and their types uh, come in the form of a move, basically. I've always said if Pikachu just got a strong ground type move, um, Pikachu wouldn't really need helpers for much of anything. Yeah, because it's the it's the poison types that you would really want to get the poison rid of. types and grass <laughs> types and ground yeah. types, rock types. Yeah, it's a, we say that we say that grass types are kind of the problem or like the inconvenience, if you will. But if you had access to a ground move to take advantage of every single grass type, basically being grass poison in Gen right. One, it would be so much easier. It's all oddishes and glooms that are problems. Yeah, because the, because in the same vein, like the special moves for the Pikachu are based on the, like the like the special Pikachu's, like the flying Pikachu and the surfing Pikachu each have their own, kind of like special move. So like, there's a water type move, there's a flying type move. I think it's called Floaty Fall. Or something. <laughs> That's one of one of them is that right? So this right here is one of the opportunities for Eevee to get burned. Pikachu usually can kill Starmie without letting it attack, but Eevee has to tank a Scald. Which, oh, it got Psywave. <laughs> Unless lucky. you get Psywave, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> I used to think, I used to joke that uh, the an aspect also gets the KO. I used to joke that I felt that um, Misty's Starmie had Serene Grace as the ability because I I was getting burned almost like 45% of the time. Uh, there was a there was a section of last year where I was like logging my stats for like every single run and I could have sworn I was like I get burned all the time on Misty. Well after like it was like some 16 to 20 runs uh, I had been burned at a rate of about 40 to 45%, That's which is almost 50% above the average. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> the Misty Stormy has Serene Grace in a game that has no abilities. All sample sizes, folks. They'll break your heart. Uh, a bit annoying on uh, Echi's side got poisoned on the Oddish yeah. here. Uh, though Echi reporting that even though he is minus defense, got a defense AV. Uh, minus defense and tanking that quick attack was a bold decision. But yeah, Echi's gonna have to heal out of the fight. It always sucks to have to do menus, extra menus. He's gonna have to probably pop a couple potions in an antidote right here. Or he's just gonna go into the fight. Okay. Let's say Echi, please don't be that reckless. <laughs> I know, I know, I know he's got plot armor, but uh, 
That would be a uh, fate. And it would just be slower anyways, because he would get status lagged immediately. Yeah. I mean, you could two controller and try to heal and fight, but I don't. In, the, in his case, he just needed to heal so much. Just he'd take the menu. <laughs> just get it Keep over. Keep the time yeah. loss. Get it out of the way. We've made it to the Nugget Bridge portion, which is uh, notoriously one of the uh, maybe more uh, lackluster portions of the run. Uh, just effectively six straight fights, uh, all with one Pokemon each until you, until the Rocket grunts at the end. It's uh, annoying so to play. <laughs> it's, it's like it's so boring but there's there is like two or three things that could just lose you time and there's nothing you can do about it yeah there's the there's the fake out from the meowth if you give the for pikachu at least if you give the sancho here a chance it can poison you as well which we'll see what actually does here because he's already healed to full he might one controller this that or he'll tempt fate yeah he's gonna one Twice. controller so the Sandshrew can poison Sting. It's not a very high chance of getting poisoned, but it can happen. Pikachu doesn't have anything that can, that's equipped to one-shot this. Again, ground types, one of the weak points for Pika. So you're saying if only you had a ground move and a grass move. Yeah, the grass move we could do without, because there's not really much to much, use it on. Yeah. Oh yeah, I think actually he has minus special defense. Not oh yeah, because he was uh, rash natured. Yeah, if he was minus defense, that quick attack on rival probably would have killed him. I think it is Aspect who is minus defense, because Aspect has the gentle nature. Well, Curvis, how's how's your tournament going? <laughs> oh. how, how are you feeling? Because you had a, you had to face Amber in round one. Yeah, I also am still a little rusty. I basically didn't play the game for two and a half years, and I've been trying to get back. I'm not quite back to my my former prowess, I would say, but we're getting there. We'll see. I have my my race on Tuesday, but we'll find out. I can do and, there. Yeah, you're playing uh you're playing Sandy and Tucker. Yeah, a bunch of second place finishers from round one. I'm excited. <laughs> Top Make place, second place finishers, because you're all on two match points. <laughs> I mean you could you could easily come out of round two ahead of me because I didn't get any match points today. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Like round three is gonna be weird because you're gonna have you know, people in these round one winner death matches getting zero points for this round. That's going to put them behind a bunch of people, but then it's going to theoretically give you an... Not that any match is really easy in this tournament, but it'll give you... Oh, actually getting poisoned again. That's rough. Um, but yeah, it's it'll theoretically give you an easier match for round three, so... Yeah, kind of hoping for that. Um... It, it is kind of one of the weird quirks of using the like the Swiss and the points round system is that we were discussing that it was a lot of like rubber banding effects. Like after the first yeah. round, all of a sudden we've matched all of the best players already together. But then right. for round three, we kind of we could see the opposite again. So somebody like myself uh, and Randall, who both lost our uh, who lost our round two matches, we're both on three points. But it also means um, somebody like um, somebody like Matt, uh, King Trubs, who lost Ooh. their first round but won their second round, is also on three match points. Aspect so you have some... ignored a Venonat. Um, poor decision, in my opinion, but I know some people don't like doing that catch. Venonats? Mm. I'm I'm a bit adverse uh, to Venonat myself. Uh, I don't like going out of my way just for Venonat. Route 25 is just 
very awkward because you do ha you spend more time on the route going for one catch than you think uh, to to kind of pull up the explanation point pace <laughs> uh copy pasta about like how a pokemon's worth 30 seconds yeah no that well, ben that, is ben and typically and is like a 45 50 second catch yeah it's it. definitely worth more to have to go out of your way to go for it i usually find myself trying to continue to do things in pairs like if i see for example, Meowth and Venonat. I'm like, okay, that actually like, then you've kind of like cut the, like the cost of going up there in half because you're splitting it up between two Pokemon. Now all of a sudden, like your Meowth is 36 and your Venonat is 36 seconds Ooh. instead of the Venonat being 42 seconds. I just noticed how uh, strong is just barreling through this with the poison. Yeah. <laughs> Probably yeah, just gonna yeah. heal in that menu before Route Six. Yeah, that's always a kind of an awkward one where it's like, if you get status lag, it's probably slower than going out of your way for the extra menu. Yeah. Well, no squirrels just yet. That was one of our uh, that was one of our secret incentives um, last year. Was the oh. uh, was the if anybody caught a Squirtle and no one did out of the whole tournament. So I got, I got my eyes uh, on the lookout for a Squirtle. I don't. I still don't agree with skipping the Venonat, but I don't hate it for Aspect just because they did get a Mankey and a Chansey. So like count wise, still better than average right now. But I feel like anytime you can get through the first like hour and a half with as many catches as possible. It just sets you up to have a smooth end game. Not give Route 25 a chance to troll you for Route 17. All right, we approach Route 6, which is Ugh, I always feel Route 6 is so all or nothing. It's like either you see your Growlithe, uh, Vulpix, uh, yeah. your, your Jigglypuffs, maybe an Abra, you get like a bunch of things, or it's just like, well, why is there just like only Pidgeys and Raditas? Yeah, sometimes, I don't know, that route is weird. Sometimes only like two things spawn, and you're just standing there waiting, and it feels awful. I, I find that it's the weirdest things. route in the game because it has, like, the worst spawn rate. Like, you can go to any route unlured and, like, stuff will spawn. Right. Except Route 6 for some reason. Oh, there's an Abra across the fence. Yeah, those Abras are just never worth it. They just break your heart, tease you as you're walking past. Yeah, unfortunately, going down Route 5 isn't super viable because you want to use the lure first so you're not really picking up the experience that you want to if you're going down route 5 uh, especially for especially for Pika because you want you want a good growth yeah you, you really need the lord one Brawl amazing because it has flamethrower, doesn't it? Yep. To help with those pesky glooms. <laughs> uh, to help with, yeah, I guess it has two glooms. Yeah, it's gloom and the sand true. Yeah, all of our runners are super close right now. Um, Echi and Aspect are at 15. Pokemon caught, which is pretty standard. Headstrong just behind at 14. 14 is still a perfectly fine number yeah, at this point. Yeah, totally fine. Yeah, that's like, that's average. Really, like anything is... 13 or better is like totally good. Anything below yeah. that, you start to sweat a little, but and there's still plenty of time to make that 12 up. 12 is like something went wrong and you're, you're kind of missing something. Aspect going up for the rare candy. It's a, it's a little out of the way. It's it's actually technically not. Oh, I'm running the... right into a growler. <laughs> You'll love to see it. 
That candy technically isn't the fastest rare candy, but to give yourself a little extra time for stuff that spawn on this route is valuable enough. And it allows you to help bad starbies. Okay. Actually, Same for also Archie. getting one. Nice. And you love that they're running towards you. It sucks when you're chasing down a growler all over the screen. <laughs> Again, to reference the explanation point. Okay. Please. Maybe maybe them chasing you aspect down a little too much. Got a whole army. <laughs> yep. You'll never get those ten seconds wasted going up and down the route. Oh no! Aspect didn't quite get the skip just right. Just a little bit too far to the right. Yeah, Aspect just too... Some people take that slower and try to line it up before Aspect just barreling through. I assume that probably works out for him most times, but not today. And this sucks because it's a grass type. Another oh, you, you, hit, just oh you hit the Bell Sprout Trainer. Yeah. I feel like yeah, that's cause... usually the one people hit if they miss this skip. For whatever reason, people always miss it to the right. Yeah. Because if you miss to the left, you get a Charmander instead. Yeah, which for Pikachu really isn't... Uh, I guess it is better. You can Zippy Zap it. Oh my god, what is that Pidgey doing all the way down there? How is that Pidgey that far? That's <laughs> the south. Oh, did you see that from Echi? It was, it was very cheeky, uh, but Echi actually used the second controller as like a uh, as like a block, as a shield, to make sure that that Growlithe uh, yeah. didn't run into him. You saw Echi kind of went up and, and looped around before running down into those trainers, giving himself a little bit more space to line up the pathing. Yeah, you'll see Headstrong do the same thing! <laughs> oh, oh also missed to the right! This has been rough, this tournament, for a lot of people, myself you know, included. So, I, I saw the Rattata, like, right at the last second, and usually, like, your instinct is, oh, dodge it, and you yeah. move, over, like, away from it. I actually didn't see Headstrong flinch, which sometimes it's like, don't flinch, don't flinch, don't flinch. Uh, but it was just lined up just off. I would blame the Rat, too, to be honest, because maybe, maybe there was just, like, a pixel to the right uh, was just off there. Actually, notably buying two repels. I guess he really doesn't want to have, like, a bad route 10. Yeah, I don't blame him. It's, uh, it feels bad when you have just, like, four Firo spawn on you. I don't know. A lot of people have been catching Firo recently. I mean, you can catch a Firo, but <laughs> that's still... <laughs> That's still I, the one catch. I almost caught to... the Fearful today. It spawned. It was on screen. I was on an odd count. I didn't have Spearow. I ended up not catching Spearow. And I was like, I couldn't go for the Fearow. And then a Krabby spawned at the last second. I was like, okay, this is better. Aspects. Hot on Etchy's tail. Same catch count and everything. I know Dynam is uh, doing tech for us today, and Dynam caught a Firo yesterday in a D-Rust run, and was... I don't know if proud is the right word. I mean, hey, you gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> you can only take what the game gives you. It was the, the cat, I saw the catch route, and it was... <laughs> it was something else. It was like Firo, Kangaskhan, Chansey, Magmar... I was like, what are we what are we doing? That's strong finally getting that poison healed off. I don't see anything funky on their catch routes just yet, by the way. Um a lot planned. Uh, I think everybody is still pretty comfortable with their catch routes. Yeah, it doesn't look like anything too weird happened other than that fancy. Yes, Iron caught the Firo in round one. Do, do you think more? Do you think more runners should catch Firos? Is it not that bad? Could somebody in chat run the calculations on yeah, the likelihood the, uh, to catch a Firo? What's the double Great Ball excellent throw percentage? It's probably not that bad, honestly.
So you see both the Echi and Aspect actually pretty neck and neck, both at 17, both on the rival fight at the same time. Uh, so that turning out to be pretty good. Still in the early games. Uh, really, uh, I, I think a lot of I think a lot of runners don't even like to even acknowledge what pace they're on until after they complete Rock Tunnel, because yeah. we still have well, we still have the Route 10 section to go, which can be such a make or break section well, for the catch route. The thing about it is you can have a bad run before Rock Tunnel, but you can't really call the run good until it's past Rock Tunnel. So you're saying you could only call the run okay before you can, Rock Tunnel. You can either call the run bad or you can choose to not comment until you see what Rock Tunnel has in store for you. <laughs> uh, also, wow, Dynam did Aspect not kill the Oddish with a, a headbutt flamethrower? Is that what happened? And then, of course, Rival uses a super potion on the fight. Got it second time around. Yeah, that unfortunately lost him a lot of time compared to Echi because Echi already went up and out. Oh, so Echi took a bit split. of a lead on that. Yeah, wrong move from Growlithe aspect, costing an extra two turns, really. Yeah, because they you had the heal turn and then the turn that actually killed. Uh, we got an update from Dynam. It says, two controller, double great ball, a great technique is 70% for Firo. That's not that bad. And if you get excellent with a raspberry, it's almost 90%. Yeah, if you're in a situation where you are low on catches and you're not getting Spiros, I have no problem with that. Actually, Ooh, choosing the catch the side up here. The See, that, I, I don't hate this because his catch count is pretty good. So even though you're eliminating your chance at a gold up later, like I was saying before, like if you can just walk out of early game with like 20 Pokemon before you even hit Route 10, like that's good. It's a good situation to be in. So it's almost so like if you get lucky with like the Venonats and the Sandshrews and the Mankeys, if you happen to get all of them, catching Psyduck is probably smart there. Yeah, and I, I believe, yeah, and Echi did catch uh, Mankey and Sandshrew. It does also help Growlithe get to level 18. So upcoming yeah. here, we got, we got Route 10. S said not too begrudgingly, but eh, we all know that Route 10 can be super finicky at the best of times so what's the what's the best way to what's the best way to attack route 10 other than like put your hands together and pray that you, you don't spot. you don't attack route 10 route 10 attacks you if you yeah. react uh obviously it is uh kind of a lot of like route exclusive pokemon being crabby uh both nidorans and spiro uh, and you also have access to a Radita Radicate combination, which does appear in many other routes. And it, it can really... Most people don't even like to update their plan on their catch counter until after Route 10. Because you kind of have to see how well or how bad it went to then start planning your next steps um, through the... Basically through, like, the end game of your catch rate. Uh, as we yeah. saw with Echi, because he's so far ahead with the Sandshrew Mankey catch and already went for a Psyduck, which is a, kind of a safe option play, uh, Echi is probably in a lot more comfortable of a position to be like, oh, if I don't see a Spiro, I don't have to, like, ring Route 10's neck to go out of my way for a Fero, for example. Yeah, I expect him to barrel through unless he gets really, really unlucky on the first set of spawns. Probably won't wind up using that repel. Aspect, on the other hand, has the Mankey, didn't get Sandshrew, and is on also a, probably pretty... Also, they so... Yeah, and so it's probably on pretty, like, average catch routes, uh, Chansey being kind of, like, the bonus right now of the run. Aspect, I think, is also in pretty good shape. Very average, but you just kind of don't want nothing to show up. Yeah, uh, I think for Aspect, if, 
If Aspect gets three catches there and doesn't see anything else, I'm probably fine to just barrel forward. Uh, and Headstrong's about in the same spot, too. Headstrong did get the Pikachu and the Meowth uh, as bonuses and got basically everything else. So again, pretty average. Like, you want, like... I, I call it, like, ignoring... Um, ignoring Rattata. You look at, again, the Spiro, Nidoran male, Nidoran female, and crap. And you are usually like, if I get two, that's okay. If you get three, you're good. But you really don't want one of those things. And again, ignoring Rattata, because you can catch Rattata and Raticate in so many places. Touching an aspect. That missing having that doesn't level feel 18 bad. Growlithe there, so no problem killing the Sanctuaries. Uh, I have one more question about Route 10. To catch Chansey or not to catch Chansey on Route 10? <laughs> I'd have to look at the percentages, but no. I don't know how good it is with Double Great Ball, but I can't imagine it's... It's... I, I, I know it's not good, but boy, oh boy, is that experience a lot. <laughs> It's like, the thing is, the, the experience it's a, isn't that it's important a dangle, at this it's point a, in the run. It's a dangling donut in front of your face where you're like... Unless you're severely underleveled at this point, it's just like, it doesn't really do much for you most of the time. Actually playing a little safe there, he probably could have sweeped past that. Wow, that's okay, a, that's a getting great a Nito sequence and a Spiro right Aspect. away. And of course, Firo, the first thing for Echi, but does get a Krabby on his screen. Yeah, one Firo we can handle. Oh. Yeah, I like to throw a Krabby right away. Sometimes I do if it doesn't, if it doesn't do jump immediate. immediately. Yeah, I don't even wait to react to that. I just throw and... If it sidesteps, it takes forever to get back into a position where you can catch it anyway, so you have time to get prepped again. How Just important is it to catch Nidoran male early, as we saw Aspect do? Like, how it's, beneficial is that to get all of the experience loaded up on it? It's not that important. It does help, but because if you can get Nidoran to level 28 earlier, it helps for a couple fights, but it's not vital by any means. You catch it last on the route, you're still getting plenty of catch XP from Rock Tunnel on it. I, th I think that's right because a lot of these catches are probably like the lowest experience yield for the run, like relatively speaking. You're catching all these small things that are mostly worth like 300 experience, which isn't really a m much of a dent at level 24. Yeah, I mean, it can make a decent difference if you get a glowing catch or two. But yeah, it's, it doesn't really matter. You're, just, you're getting enough XP in Rock Tunnel that it doesn't matter when on the route you're getting a Nito as long as you're getting one. Well, Echi at least has one of them, though just has the Nidoran female. Uh, Headstrong got Nidoran male, which is an option for Eevee, but not, necess not nearly as required as it is on the uh, opposite side of the field. Aspect also, so oh, that Raticate is coming in hot <laughs> to get the Spiro first, which I think is perfect because then you're probably going to get that Raticate experience on everything that you needed. Meanwhile, Echi's still driving in three Firos on screen. Yeah, so this is what I expected for Echi. He didn't get a male Nito, but he got enough catches there that not really worth him hanging out using a repel trying to get squeak out one more catch because of his catch count so he's just gonna go with the nido queen instead yeah totally he actually fine. already unmarked nidoran male from yep. his tracker so it does look like etchy is just gonna leave and enter tunnel from here with the nido queen strats yeah he got three catches there and he can still get a retata later so he's in good shape yeah that's a that's a pretty good route 10 yeah you get you get Nidoran female, Spiro, and Krabby. Three out of the four that you were looking for. Grab a rat, uh, Ratata later. I think you're the sitting pretty comfy. Wound up using the repel there. Don't blame her. Catch count's not quite as good. Make sure you walk away with a lot of stuff from here, in her case. 
I think this I think this stabilizes uh Headstrong's Route 10. Uh, cause she did get um everything except the Krabby. So got both Nidoran's Spiro and Ratata. Uh caught Ratata, I think, earlier. So Raticate is still an option for her. Yeah, and also an option later. So And there's and there's aspect catching the Raticate himself, getting nineteen hundred experience. You're gonna see a lot of Evos. aspects in a, in a cutscene for the next two minutes. Enjoy that. Yeah, and Etchy's the first to hit. Oh, immediate and it gets Rhyhorn. an immediate Rhyhorn. In fact, really smartly wants to go for the uh, Zubat first. Uh, I think the Zubat Rhyhorn was glowing, the too. Yeah, Zubat being the only Pokemon that we catch in this sequ sequence that evolves in one level. So catching it before you get the experience to get it out of your party as soon as possible is super valuable. Yeah, Etchie's about to be in the same cutseat simulator with that Rhyhorn catch. In fact, Probably. if this if this Rhyhorn is worth a lot of experience, I think if it's uh, supersized, he'll get the Zubat to evolve. I think if it's just regular glowing, it's not going to be quite enough. Uh, but he'll have to do a party management men menu anyways, because this Rhyhorn is going to go straight into the box. <laughs> Aspect uh, joking that he's evolving Echi. <laughs> because he is still in those Evo cutscenes. Echi with the cowardly Raz on the right one. I, I would say it's cowardly, but he's the only player that I know that can hit Raz and get a first cycle throw. I'm always a little bit too slow to that, and I can't figure out why. Because I can't get that throw as comfortably as he can. So there's a there's there's a skill issue difference going on. <laughs> Aspect clearing the party out, getting ready for everything to just jump right in and tunnel. And now, and now gonna already. be in a cutscene <laughs> cutscene hell yep. for a little bit. <laughs> I like it. I like when you can just get your party cleaned up right away in Rock Tunnel. Not have to worry about it. I always find that there's there's like two really good spots to party manage it's basically right as you get all of your one level things evolved uh and then you clean out your party pretty effectively and then the second is basically after you catch zubat and graveler and then the zubat evolves uh after that moment you ditch those two pokemon and then you again have a pretty clean party just with machop and cubone uh left to evolve I like when you can walk in there with all the Route 10 patches and get a glowing Grappler right away, and then they all evolve, and Grappler goes straight into the box, and you can clear out everything. It's my favorite. Um, okay. Actually gonna hold off on the, the Nido Queen evolution for now. Gonna need another menu at some point anyway. So I think all three of the runners uh, got through Route 10 pretty cleanly, he, even though the yeah. Feroes wanted something, had something on their mind uh, for one of our players. But no Fero catches, nothing like, nothing true extraordinary with the catch route, nothing that screams, oh, you're way far behind or you're way far ahead, just pretty comfortable right now. Yeah, with uh, the catch counts they came in not with. teaching Slam, uh, would you like to... Uh, somebody in here may have uh, taught Slam. <laughs> yeah, that was another quirk of Aspects PP earlier. Yeah, he accidentally taught Slam over something. Over Zippy Zap, which... Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, not good. He said he actually clicked the move in battle a few times. Ooh, here's Rappler. a glowing Graveler. Uh, that and can a be a horn for Headstrong. Experience. Uh, and Graveler right away for Aspect does go for it. Yeah, yeah. Aspect got a 301 teaching slam over Zippy Zap. 
Let, let, let that just sink in. Ooh, that's a nasty breakout for Aspect because Graveler with no Raz is still like a 90% catch. Yeah. So that feels really bad to whiff on that. Great throw on the second attempt and hope, thankfully not punished for it. Yeah, and saying oh. earlier today, 2C is the uh, Elite Four because he realized that he was just off of uh, world record pace, so there was no point to just play hyper risky. Uh, so saying 2C is right the E4 and then <laughs> and then get sub three. Uh, so all three runners with Rhyhorn. Uh, again, it's kind of same thing here. Uh, Raspberry can guarantee it. Without it, it's about 90%. And that's an oh, that's such a frustrating breakout. Yeah. So Aspect twice in a row gets two 90% breakouts. That's definitely a frustration uh, throwback. It gets him to get in the great, the great technique throw instead. Of course, etiquette reminding everybody that uh, he had the Pikachu world record at one point, uh, teaching dig. Uh, that's right, world record used to teach the move dig to Pikachu, which means you fought the rocket trainer just outside the smashed up house in Cerulean. Yeah. Yeah, hey, how I'll, I'll be the one to how say far it. Any, <laughs> any Pika record with Dig was not a serious record. <laughs> <laughs> and Etiquette knows it. <laughs> are you are you saying you weren't on the scene yet? Oh, I was here. <laughs> Were you using Dig? At one point, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and how seriously did you take those runs? Not very. <laughs> by your by your own logic, apparently not very seriously. Yeah, I didn't start speedrunning soon enough. Y'all, y'all did the y'all did the hard work of making the route, you know, good <laughs> before I got on the scene. I didn't do too much to make the any percent routes good, but I put in my routing time on the the long categories. Are there is there is there anything that you think you're like most proud of that you like came up with in terms of the route to be like, oh yeah, I'm gonna do this fight this way um honestly not really i think my biggest contributions to any percent in particular has just been patch route thinking no no feroes at the time i assume no no fear <laughs> um i think i was one of the first to start that uh evolving vault sore Stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, remember, the, yeah. Remember, just remember like the when longer... we didn't think the Pokeball mattered. Oh man, this. Oh. People used to be very scared of evolving anything that took more than three or four levels, but I think I was one of the first to realize that there are some situations where it's still good, it's still safety time. It's it is kind of interesting that like. Like, each level is two seconds, plus all the moves learned is, like, additional two seconds here or there. So, evol so evolving, the like, is, the Cubo and the Machop is, that's ten seconds of just level up time versus the 13 for, for a Bulbasaur, apparently. The times we're evolving, or, you know, allowing things that need more levels to evolve is situations where it's helping you avoid an extra menu, which is the case for Bulbasaur. With Oddish, it's not really the same. It's just Oddish you need in your party up until the point where it's 14 or 15 anyway, so then it's just six levels from there. 
so that's a little different. But yeah, avoiding menus is good. It's, it's interesting that the EV side adopted the the Oddish way of thinking because we don't use the Bell Sprout for anything. But then it just became such a comfortable second controller yep. option that it ended up just kind of working out. It does cost a little bit more time, but the consistency you get with it was so valuable. Again, uh, it all comes back to having high catch counts in the early game. Anything you can do yeah. that loses you a little bit of time, maybe, but just guarantees you're going to have X number of Pokemon in the first hour of the run, it helps helps you just play Route 10 and Rock Tunnel and everything after. Ooh, so Kangaskhan on screen. Oh, Headstrong's <laughs> intentionally avoiding it. Yeah, no, nobody is in a desperate enough situation where they should be going for a <laughs> Kangaskhan right now. That's a, that would be a poor choice. Just, abs just absolutely hanging out right there. Oh, oh, oh I just saw an aspect ladder. went went for the Zubat and ended up hitting the ladder uh, instead. Oh, it's not going to get punished. Zubat respawned. Well, punished with uh, the same one. Lo two load times, but yeah, thankfully still getting the Zubat there. Yeah, I mean, nobody has anything crazy marked still, and they have planned numbers well over 50 still, so... There's going to be and some everybody's catch room. count at, is 30 and above right now, which is great. Like, 30 should probably be, like, your average. And, you know, you're happy enough. You're, you're okay, as some would say. Uh, to be at, like, 32, 33 exiting Rock Tunnel is, like, that's the sweet spot. Um, like you said, having, having good early game numbers catch count uh, helps you out so much. And that this early game basically ends at Rock Tunnel. What's the yeah, lowest you've in, ever had? Everybody's in good shape here. Which helps you have a clear mind for decisions and hideout when you're not worrying about where your catches are going to come from later. So Etchy exits with 31 Pokemon and about 115 and a half. Save for, you know, the lag and whatnot. That's a really strong run. Yeah. Is is that is that close enough to be like this could sub three? Um, I think it could. I think it could. It's still just so early still to some... say because yeah. hideout, hideout, and tower are big variants still. So I I don't even like consider my real pace until I'm Blaine. at least close to getting Staryu at minimum. But, but yeah, so yeah, strong uh, nonetheless. This is this is very strong. Yeah, it's a good time for sure. Uh, so yeah, we. So I, I think as we we have we get through the first third of this run, I think we can comfortably say that Echi is leading right now um, with 31 Pokemon, is one behind Aspect, um, but is has more than. More than more than a marginal lead plot wise. Uh, Headstrong has the lowest catch count right now, uh, and she's getting to the last fight in Rock Tunnel, the fight that Aspect is on at the moment. So if you're kind of looking for a uh, kind of a first, an early game pace, and Etchy's in the lead, uh, Aspect is in second, and then Headstrong is just behind. So very much close enough that Route 17 and whatnot, starry catches and stuff could still swing any right. direction. Yeah, Aspect leaves with 32 Pokemon in it and about a 117 flat, which is in in itself is also pretty strong. It's a lot less likely to say like get sub three <laughs> if you're thinking of like the ultimate high end time. That's probably a little bit off that pace. But considering Aspect's PB is like a 301 low as of, well, a few hours ago, <laughs> uh, that's pretty close. That is, that is definitely in that realm. Uh, and Headstrong... Don't, don't get too oh, spoiled by saying sub 3. That's not going to happen too often in a race <laughs> setting. Could happen again, but I would not really expect more people to be popping out sub 3s in tournament races. And Headstrong leaves with 30 Pokemon and a 117 high or upper 
uh, just a little bit off the pace compared to these others. Uh, and it's not its not so much that she's behind in plot, it's actually more of a concern that she's just one or two Pokemon behind. Uh, Headstrong probably is just wishing she had that one or two extra catches uh, in her pocket already uh, with this same pace. Yeah, just a situation where she's got to keep her head down, keep chugging away, and there's still bad things that could happen to the Pika runners in Hideout and stuff. I think Hideout is maybe a little less consistent on Pika. Not necessarily slower, but more weird things can happen. Yeah, looking at the catch routes, uh, Headstrong is missing Cubone. I think that's kind of like the big one. Funny enough, it can be recovered. Cubone can spawn in Tower. Uh, which ends up being the optimal way to get Marowak, because you just get the one level instead of four levels. Uh, so it is still an option, but is a lot less likely. Yeah, Headstrong doesn't have a Pidgey yet either, so that's an easy... A Pidgey or Eradicate, so those are easy ones that she can mm -hmm. always pick up along the way in a couple yeah, spots so, here. So still plenty to play with. Uh, also it's not Vulpix. Like... Yeah. Oh yeah, no Vulpix. And Vulpix can just... Qu pretty easily spawn on yeah. uh, Route 7. Yeah, all three of those, I would say she has a pretty good chance of running into at least one place. Yeah, or three. getting like two out of those three. And yeah, like, like the nice yeah, thing okay. is nobody nobody caught anything weird early. Like nobody caught um, like an early Spearow that prevented them from getting Fearow. Nobody caught, uh, well, I guess there was an yeah. early Psyduck, but that was more so just a decision. But that, of, but that was an intentional play because if you look yeah. at Edgy's, catch tracker he still doesn't have ratata or Raticate. yeah there's a big difference between a desperation psyduck and a psyduck that just furthers an already good situation which was definitely the case in this run yeah and etchy will still has an option to catch pidgeotto yeah uh and then just get the pidgeot that way and etchy with the queen is gonna have a good I didn't see any stats. I don't know if there was an opportunity to see stats, but I think the Nido Queen was level 28 or close to it. So she's going to have a nice chance at uh, crunching the Hypno. And then just a comment on Aspect's catch route. Again, looks pretty normal. Uh, the only thing he's missing is Jigglypuff. Yeah, which, which again, is, is another catch that is possible on route seven kind of doesn't have as many uh outside options already has the ratata line uh already has early pidgey pidgeotto uh so won't be getting pidgeot that way uh but it just looks completely normal has the mankey has the chancy so probably has like two extra bonus catches in hand anyways as you see i mean 32 exiting tunnel is usually pretty comfortable that gives you a margin to work with yeah they're pretty much all in similar situations catch count wise aspect having more Pokemon, but the other two just having easy catches that they're almost certainly going to run into that Aspect already has, so very similar. So now we approach the hideout section, which is the section that's prob probably the most like battle-intensive section uh, for this early game, or the mid-game with the starters. It has the messiest fights, I think. Yeah, it's it's where the routes like if you look at the route as like a like a flow chart or like a like a spaghetti plot, there's so many different lines that are available, all based on do I have high attack, do I have high special attack, do I have high speed, do I have high experience, how good's my Nido King, how's good my how good is my Rhyhorn? There's so many little factors that can make these lines messy. Yeah, but. There is like the optimal line for whatever you have right now. It's just the knowledge of knowing what line to take is what really separates the great runners from the elite runners, especially in terms of consistency. Because getting through this section consistently good is such a challenge. Has Strong got the Aurora Beam from Metronome? Nothing too crazy. I think my worst metronome was Glare. It was like Glare into good. like a confusion or something. And it was just like, really, we're doing this? Okay, so let's see if Etchy can get the, the one shot here. 
This is the biggest advantage of Nido Queen over Nido King. Yes, I did drop a weather reference. The spaghetti plot. It's the. It is how you track hurricanes. It's like a hundred different models that all track the center of the hurricane slightly differently. That's just how Rocket Hideout looks. Is that you have a hundred different lines and they're all slightly different. Yeah, not quite being level twenty-eight, so the Nido Queen didn't have as good of a range there. Fortunate. There's a couple different ways that you can handle the rest of Hideout with without a Nido King. I'm curious what actually does here. For these next two fights. I saw Headstrong went up to Route 7. I didn't I didn't catch what she caught uh, on the route as I was. Uh looks like eradicate. Oh, they get good experience. Yeah. This is a good... This is, like, the best spot for Raticate, I think. At least... Well, I'm thinking more of a peek aside thing, because it can well, help you it, get level 28 for that Hypno fight on either Nido King or Pikachu. And, and getting level 28 is still super valuable for Eevee, because you want to okay. teach double... You want to teach double edge before the Hypno, because then you just have a clean yes. two-controller one-shot. Makes sense. Uh, so anytime before the Hypno, you teach Double Edge, and then after the Hypno, you tend to ignore Double Edge. Because then then you don't really need it anymore. Yeah, so actually using Rhyhorn for this this fight, Nido Queen, you can use just solo Pika. But I think this Rhyhorn strat is probably more consistent. Yeah, that was that was eradicate that was caught. Um, it looked like it was really necessary because the EV is still just level twenty six, which yeah, that's, that's a bit that's a bit on the low side. Yeah, for that's scary. Entering auto. Okay, but hitting twenty seven there, so should be fine. But yeah, without that eradicate, it might have gotten a little dicey. Well, your your route ten and your rock tunnel experience are still important. I think people overlook it a little bit these days, but it's still... It's it's important in a way where it's it's also hard to control because it does it does ultimately come down to, oh, was your Graveler glowing? Because Graveler is going to be worth the most experience in well, that section. I'm more Graveler so referring to, like, once we realize we can double Great Ball stuff, like the catch chances shot up, so people kind of just YOLO throw more often. But you gotta watch, you gotta pay attention to your experience, because if it's if it's low, you still want to be waiting for those excellent throws. Yeah, or really guaranteeing that you're going to get it first ball and make sure to get that yeah. extra multiplier. Otherwise, you're leaving the the different you're you're cutting your experience gained uh, in two thirds because you're 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 missing out on that 1.5 x multiplier. Yeah, and this is this is the big reason why you want to hit 28 for this hypno is that at 27 the optimal way is to one control the fight and go for a three turn to set up to x attack double headbutt but you have left yourself open to hypnosis in which headstrong got hit with it and dodged it so it almost turned into a five turn fight which just feels awful especially if you have to burn two awakenings yeah And I didn't, I don't remember from the beginning of the run, but I assume everybody probably bought three of them. Uh, usually it's three. I think Headstrong only bought two. Okay. Uh, because she opted to buy the seventh Great Ball instead. Yeah, so we'll see if that comes back to bite her at any point here. Yeah, because you don't pick up any extra... Uh, you don't pick up any extra awakenings or like just single use heal items. Uh, you just are gifted two full heal like items. Uh, the pewter crunchies and the jailer the... sable. Yes. <laughs> uh, and then you might, and then you usually just buy some full heals for the end of the run in the last shop, just because you have a little extra money to drop. 
But outside of that, uh, really a lot of the items are just there to set up the god menu. And then you just hope you don't have to use them all. Because the moment you lose one, uh, like, a, your stock of one of those items, be them antidotes, awakenings, potions, uh, all of your items shift over by one slot, and then you've lost that god menu. So now, now whatever was in the bottom left, be it the X attack or the X special attack, now slides back over to the next column and th thus takes two inputs instead of one. Just gets annoying and it can it can force some unforced errors if you're not paying attention. So actually going into Jesse and James here, um, Rhyhorn is pretty good for this fight, but if it misses, it can start to go south pretty quickly with the drill run. So important turn one here to hit. Uh, drill run being a huge, depending on your attack, a favorable range. You know, you just don't want to get like minus attack. Okay, so that's yeah. a good turn one. So yeah, just taking out the Arbok turn one is makes this it's uh, critical. guarantee that it'll be like, you'll at least get through this without anything too weird happening. Yeah, unfortunately, the uh, the wheezing is a range, and it's not a great range either. Yeah, uh, it's but not. it's just less threat if the R box out of play. Right, you just don't have two things targeting you in that case. So the nice thing is Rhyhorn winds up taking a lot of the damage and the poison attention on this fight, and you don't need it after this fight, so you don't have to worry about healing it. So that was fine, you know, missed the the wheezing range, but no big deal. Yeah, that feel that feels pretty standard. Like you right kind of expect that. Although I, it was probably it, it's a little just a unlucky bonus to get the two shot. Because he was level twenty six. If you're like still level twenty four, Rhyhorn there for whatever reason, that's when you probably should expect that to be three turns. But see, so yeah, I actually probably got a little unlucky there. Uh, it's funny that the uh, it is funny that Eevee picked up on that strat. Uh, but instead of using the Nido, uh, you still just use the Rhyhorn and then the partner Eevee uh, in the same way because the the Oko and the Arbok is far more likely with Rhyhorn than it ever is with Eevee unless you have literally cracked special attack. Um, but it makes the Weezing range a lot better to attack with both because the, uh, the plus zero... Uh, Glitzy Glow tends to cover a lot more than going to plus four Drill Run. Okay. Aspect also taking out the Arbok turn one. Good stuff. See if he can maybe make up a little bit of time here, get in the wheezing range. Oh, no luck. It was not. But still an okay fight. Getting through unscathed. Yeah, basically, basically identical here. Funny, funny enough, Aspect choosing to use uh, Fury Swipes to not risk uh, missing the 5% drill run. Yeah, covering all your bases there. Oh, that's kind of an interesting... Uh, set up from Headstrong, leading Bouncy Bubble turn one on the Arbok. I guess I guess that was kind of to anticipate maybe getting hit by the Arbok, but instead the Arbok did uh, target the Rhyhorn immediately. Yeah, hard to know what's going to happen here, what they're going to choose to target on any given run. Okay, well at least the Rhyhorn got poisoned there instead of Eevee. Seem like this is going terribly for Headstrong. Yeah, Headstrong makes it out because uh, it looked like Headstrong just set up the plus four uh, on the Arbok and didn't have need to use anything on that second turn. 
So that was okay. Three turn is definitely kind of the norm. Uh, Etchy does get the uh, the Rhyhorn KO. Did Aspect just one shot the Weezing? I turned around. I didn't see that. I might have been. I was probably seeing things. <laughs> I just glanced over, and it looked like the whole HP bar dropped from full. Uh, it says no. He did the headbutt plus thunderbolt. Oh, okay. I'm gonna say I didn't think anybody had that crazy of a Pikachu. <laughs> So, so you are anticipating the Pikachus to uh, Oko the Rhyhorn with the plus six helping hand double kick. Yes. The only time it doesn't is if you're minus attack. Or if you're not level 28. Yeah, that's the, re really where you start to see the starter get outclassed in fights. Having to go plus six helping hand just to kill one Pokemon is <laughs> not great. So How scary is the Persian? Because I know you not. got two I know you got two targets. Are you ever scared of just seeing Slash on the Pikachu right away? No, I don't even think a Slash crit kills Pikachu from full. Maybe minus defense it does. Yeah. Um if you're going into Persian full health, which you pretty much always should be, there's really nothing to worry about. <laughs> the Rhyhorn is definitely the scary one of those, but again, only if you're minus attack. That thing will drill run you, and it will kill you. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> drill run never misses if the opponent is using it. Right. That's how it goes. Yeah, I think it, I think it's not all that scary of a fight for the EV side either. Uh, you, if you see like slash crit turn one, it can get a little spooky. And worst case scenario, you have to summon second controller mid fight in order to heal out of it. Because the problem is, is that the Persian does outspeed. Yeah, I was gonna say Persian is pretty fast, but a Pikachu just does not have problems with that. I'm, I'm not sure if Pikachu straight up outspeeds that Persian, but Zippy's app plus two priority just wins. It's nice to it's nice that it's nice that the Sizzly Slide Burn will always uh, limit the amount of damage even with a crit. So Headstrong being at like 35 HP always lives a uh, slash crit. Oh, actually, <laughs> actually the saw a Tower Q Bone, but he didn't wrong need it. person. Yeah, I needed it earlier today. <laughs> Headstrong needs it. Oh no, Head. Wait. Yeah. Yeah, I think Headstrong needs, needs it. Well, not needs it. But Headstrong could use it. Would, would like to would like to see it spawn. She did. Uh, look, take it I'm, I'm sure Etchy's her. gonna go for that Ghastly as soon as he finishes this fight because he saw it like right as he was talking to the Chandler. Etiquette. If you're desperate enough to be looking for a tower Machop, you have bigger problems. I was looking for it too, and but listen, the the problem Etiquette and I had was saying being a god gamer. Yeah, well, like nothing no, you can do about someone right? busting out a sub three. You can do about that. Come on, Etchy, use the pineapple berry, coward. <laughs> ghastly doing ghastly things. Well, I hope everybody enjoyed their time at the Game Corner. Since that apparently is everybody's favorite spot now, the Game Corner. I do enjoy the Game Corner. I was mentioning that the... Uh, I think my favorite Game Corner music is the Gen 2 Game Corner. Like the Voltorb Flip.
I need double heal pads. Not for Etchy. Good spinner pattern, too. Doesn't that feel nice when they just kind of, like, part... It's like the parting of the seas. <laughs> Yeah, when it when it goes well, it really feels like you're just controlling it, doesn't it? Wait, there's a Voltorb flip. Hey, I want to. <laughs> this is dangerous. I can't do this while I'm commentating. <laughs> God, I love Voltorb flip. Oh, okay, I actually picked up the hideout. Ultra Balls. Didn't need those ones. It's an interesting choice, because he doesn't need... ...many catches, I don't think. Yeah, I did see that too! He only but needs his like... Run is... uh, yeah, maybe his he run does need clean. seven. But most of his catches are all going to be pretty easy. Let's see here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I see eight. Uh, I see, well, and that's on 53 plans, so maybe just seven. Right. Seven is pretty marginal. I think because... I think because he picked up the extra Ultra Balls, he switched to Ghastly just to make it consistent. Otherwise, you could pro if you like Yolo throw Ghastly, you can you can realistically stay on Great Balls for uh, Do Duo and uh, Ponyta. As I flinched as I saw Headstrong pause for the spinner, a little bit closer than I would have done that. But I usually like to. I mean, my rule of thumb is that if I need six. Uh, catches, then eight Ultra Balls is good enough. Like, two extra is what I like to go for. But if I need seven, then I usually get the extra Ultra Balls and hide out. Yeah, I tend to go, if I need more Ultra Balls, I will just double Great Ball the Ghastly and maybe one thing on Route 17. And it usually works out fine. Etchy says he has a 50% plus 4 range. Is that plus 4 Thunderbolt? Yeah. Just teach Thunder, Etchy. It'd be guaranteed. Just don't miss. Yeah, and it would be 70% accurate at 100% range as opposed to 50% range at 100% accurate. That sounds like a win-win to me. Yeah. Or just hit the range. It's easy. Plot armor. I mean... Yeah, actually, mark it ghastly. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, the level 30 just made that guaranteed. True. The thunder's more fun. Yeah, don't don't we like Gamba Gamba in this chat, or is, or are we more of a slots chat? Who's gonna catch a Snorlax in this tournament? That's what mm. I want to know. That's a good question. I'm gonna I'm gonna look at the entrance here. Uh, I feel like Burner is probably most likely. <laughs> to catch the Snorlax, because Burner just caught everything in round one. Was it was it Iron who caught the Vile Plume round one? Or was it Amazing. someone else? Uh, Iron says yes. Uh, then I changed my vote to I think Iron's gonna catch the Snorlax. Because if you're crazy enough to catch the Vile Plume, then you're crazy enough to catch the Snorlax. By the way, we do have a prediction in chat now. 
Uh, so get your votes in. If you think any of the three stars that we'll catch will have a CP above 1,099. That is above 1,099. I assume that means not above or equal to. <laughs> That's pretty high, but we have seen it in this tournament before. Uh, so far, the highest CP, uh, Crisis caught one that was 1,124. Uh, the lowest that we had in the tournament, funny enough, we saw a 1,001, and that was from King Trubs, and Matt actually ran away from that one. Uh, and ultimately caught a 1075. So that honor actually goes to Head Bob, who had caught a 1009 in round one. I, you know, I don't know about you, but I've I haven't seen a sub 1000 CP star in a while. I don't even look at the CP. <laughs> CP is kind of a lie. Uh, for example, the star I had. Uh, this morning was like 1050 and it was one of the best stars I've ever had yeah I've but. had a ton of you know sometimes people will just tell me what the CP is when I'm doing runs and I've had plenty in that 1040 to 1050 range that turn out being really good I mean my my sub 3 run has a 1032 star it wasn't great but it wasn't bad it was kind of in that like all right, I can work with this. This isn't like I'm not gonna lose any turns to this, except to maybe like Lorelei. Like I, I had to go yeah. plus six on Lorelei, but that was like the only turn that I had to sacrifice. It's the thing, like most stars, regardless of their special attack or whatever other stat, like most of them have roughly the same potential. It's just a matter of are you gonna hit the range? The range might be a little better for this one than that one, but like the top end for most of them, unless you have a really, really good one is about the same so just get lucky it's easy somebody had calculated what the lowest possible cp is to, uh to have 31 in special attack and speed Oof. and it was like 10 teens it was like 10 11 or something so if you're that or above you can have 31 in both special and speed and you're fine <laughs> that's all you need uh, looks like Etchy is just blitzing through. Obviously didn't need Ooh. to catch the Psyduck scene earlier. Ooh. Getting an excellent on the side throw on a Ponyta. Top level shit right there. Uh, meanwhile, I saw Headstrong get kind of a nasty breakout. It was a great throw from Double Great Ball. Uh, this one's going to get in, though, with the Ultra Ball and the Excellent. Yeah. curious what Echi does here, because he doesn't have party. Like, is he going to put that pony into his party, or is he just going to candy it later? Ooh, Rapidash on screen, but Aspect goes back up for the side. I think this is intentional. Yeah, yeah. It looked like yeah, it. there was uh, just a do duo charging at him at the same moment. I wasn't sure which one he was encountering. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Seeing Rapid Ash run independently on screen always makes me flinch. They're so fast. <laughs> that's because they have no wind up time. I think that's why it, it looks so jarring, is that when they move, they just move. Ugh. Fortunately, Headstrong getting a bit of a Joy Con moment. Wondering why Etchy still has Pikachu in his party, though. I think he's just not had, like, a good spot to deposit yet. Well, you menu, he should have taken it out after Tower. That would have allowed him to have Ponyta right to his party as well. Maybe could have avoided candying it. 
it's minor. How valuable though. is it to save that candy on? I, I mean, it's it's fine. It doesn't really matter. It's just. Um, potentially won't be able to triple candy star you if he gets a bad one. <laughs> oh, another chancy. <laughs> Actually, aspect already is already one gone. of those. Don't really want to catch one here either way. This is this is probably the worst place to catch a chancy. Because, like, you just don't... I don't know. Is it better or worse than Route 10? Because here, at least you have Ultra Balls. Well, there's pl there's a plus side to Route 10. Because if it gets in, then you get a massive amount of experience. And you're just loving yeah. life. But again, the, like, at Route 10, but like here, XP you don't doesn't... need the experience here on anything. Yeah, I mean, you don't really need it on Route 10 either, as long as your other catches go normal. It's overkill at that point. I've went for Mansion Chansey once. It would have been great if it would have got in. That one also ran on me. Uh, oh, there's a Chansey hit! It's a spot right in front of Aspect. Uh, I don't think the game got the menu. Aspect actually already has a Chansey. And that's just the third one he's seen. <laughs> I don't know if Chansey can be uh, uh, catch chained, but certainly felt that way on this route. <laughs> yeah, only in Cerulean Cave. Where it is a 10% encounter slot. Yeah, so this is uh, still looking like a really good time for Echi. Probably like 300 still possible. He's really just, again, just a very strong run from 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 the beginning of the game. Because <laughs> nothing has gone wrong. And everything has been smooth sailing, catch count wise. Uh, hitting 40 for C skim is just good. Uh, you don't really anticipate going out of your way for anything unusual. So we'll likely be seeing our first star yeah, from Echi soon. Not going to need a ton of cool or anything here. He's looking to catch a rat and a Grimer in Mansion, looks like. Then he'll be good. Does need a star you to show up though. Yeah, you actually see him kind doing of a little loop around. Yeah, doing more a little, time. little little swerving. Oh, ugh, he accidentally canceled that lure. He's gonna want to relure immediately. Uh, oh, nice uh nice play to pop the repel. Yeah, to totally, refresh those there. spawns because there's probably a lot of spawns that are uh, okay. just kind of dicking around at the top of the route. But here's the star, and we've got a 1047. Yep. It'll either be the worst star you've ever seen in your life, or... Or the best. 120 <laughs> special attack. A uh, bit of an awkward side throw. It did just 96 for Aspect. Yeah. Uh, 1096 is excellent. Unlike the throw, again, just missed the circle straight <laughs> down the middle. Uh, but silver raspberries are pretty strong when you look yeah, at that. Busted. Cubone's still not evolved. Uh, 1096 starts getting pretty likely that you have at least something good. You might still have one of your stats bad, but to have both stats bad is pretty unlikely at this yeah. point. I think has really good speed and bad special attack still just doesn't do anything for you. Good speed does not move me. Yeah, it's just like, you just need sure. the speed to be good enough, and then you just need the speed to be not bare minimum. That's it. Uh, <coughs> oh. <laughs> On cue. <laughs> oh, that star looked really bad from Echi. That speed was low. Oh no! Wait, that was the Ponyta. Never mind. That was the first. Never mind. I'm an idiot. You know what? 
I was looking at you it, so what? I wasn't Kirby, gonna question uh, you. Kermis, you you can you can just take this one. I'm gonna go grab a water. <laughs> <laughs> You're on for 60 seconds because I I am stupid. I'm always watching for. Oh, the, it starts uh... great. Okay, whatever. I'm an idiot. No, don't put that. Okay, I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was like 93 speed. That's pretty good. I don't ever really pay too close attention to the star you stats until it's a star me though. Since those are the stats that you need to know. But Starmie looked really good to me, as far as I saw. Yeah, good stars only come on races. They don't come on real PB attempts, unless you're playing AOP. That's the rule. AOP gets the greatest stars of all time. 90% gets bare minimum special attack half the time. What we got here, Echi? Yeah, 124. Mm -hmm. Disgusting. Disgusting in a good way. Echi's gonna get to do some silly stuff here. Time to learn how much of a coward Echi is or is not. Yeah, when do you ever start thinking of like safe strats at any point in the run where you're like, oh, I can start playing safe from here? I mean, yeah, depending on the kind of lead you have. I wouldn't say Echi has a big enough lead. I mean, we'll find out soon once we're past Archer and stuff. Then you can start thinking about those things, but. I don't think he's going to have quite a big enough lead to get too safe. Oh my god, that's so... <laughs> Aspect Star is so fast. That is... That's got to be one of the fastest stars I've seen. Woohoo! Hitting 101 speed before wow. evolution. Wow. Um... I believe, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Razor had a st uh, Starmie so fast in this tournament, he outsped Agatha. That's crazy. I've which is only, which is only the, it's only the second time I've ever heard of it happening. Uh, I believe it happened to Wave Warrior in last year's tournament, uh, where he also got a star so fast, uh, you could skip the X speed on Agatha. Dang, Aspect with a Moonstone that he never used? Does that factor Ooh, into his catch total? Etiquette with a nice uh, fun fact here. Uh, at level 46, the star you can have maximum 99 speed without AVs. Wow. So Aspect star has maximum. already picked up two AVs in speed and has maximum speed. Yeah, sorry. Go power. As it officially says attack. in the Let's Go strategy guide, it does say go power. See, this is what I'm talking about. Aspect has basically minimum special attack. That's pretty close to it. Uh, but has 96 did nothing. But it has more than maximum speed. Don't never get excited about the, the high <laughs> CP. This is your proof right here. All right, headstrong going for the. Uh... Uh, I'm going for the Magmar here. I don't know if Dynam wants to jump and call and tell us all about the Magmar strats <laughs> they came up with. Some, something something fire punch on blue. Oh jeez. That reeks of desperation. <laughs> I don't know if it's as much desperation as it is like a way to get a 100% accuracy move. And not have Thank to you. use fire ban fire, fire blast. Yeah. <laughs> something something it has to be lured though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean what scenario are you gonna have a Lord Magmar but no Dodrio? I guess it could happen. You could just skip Dodrio. 
There's uh, that's some that's some funny strats, for sure. Uh, I did see that Echi and Aspect both went with the quote, quote risky uh, Ted strat, where you just plop the rapid ash there. Yeah, this is gonna be interesting because Aspect does not have a good star, but is definitely a little bit behind here. So it'll be interesting to see how they handle that. Etiquette says that uh, Etch or is it is it Aspect Star that has the max speed? Yeah. Uh, already is going to hit 150 speed for Agatha, guaranteed. And it's just a matter of how many more speed AVs are we going to see? Yeah, outspeeding Agatha would help. Sure. Should be, we should be getting close to seeing how good Headstrong Star actually is as well. Yeah, I'm watching for it. Mm -hmm. That menu should be coming up pretty soon here. Yeah, another another good uh, another good judge of pace outside of uh, exiting Rock Tunnel is to see what your Blaine split is. Uh, typically getting sub two on Blaine with 45 or 46 catches is a sure sign of in that like sub three realm. Um, yeah, a good- But Etchie's a little Blaine bit time. off of that because he, he's starting the fight just, uh, just outside of two hours. A good run Blaine time to the end is basically exactly an hour. Uh, Headstrong Star is okay. It's not great special attack, it's not minimum, uh, and speed just kind of like cleared the bar. The speed's pretty fast, but it's not like fast enough to make a difference. Um, that's the weird thing with speed is like, you just don't want to have minimum speed and you're fine, and then that's like good enough. After playing, uh, it basically doesn't you, matter at all. <laughs> unless you have like aspects level of speed. It's like there's the difference is like having zero IV, one to thirty one, and then thirty one with only speed APs. So it's like it's just unfortunate that it's like oh my speed's like pretty good, but a lot of that just like doesn't matter. One twelve special attack or headstrong, not great. Yeah, it's not great, but you at least clear like the lowest possible threshold, which is uh, 109 is the lowest. It does mean that uh, the nine tails would be a range. Uh, Echi finishes, uh, Echi finishes Blaine at about the 201 mark uh, with 46 before this evolution. Now 47 after, still pretty good pace. Still, this is about the point where you say, okay, this is like around 300, maybe 301 if you play a little safer. Yeah, we're probably... Yeah, I mean, he has a good star, so he can kind of do some risky things and probably get a 3-0-0 still. But in all likelihood, something will go wrong along the way, and we're probably looking at a 3-0-1. Yeah, as we approach the end game where we're only using star meat, it's like, you kind of have that pace and say, oh, this could sub-3, this could 3 double O. And then from here on out, it's just what can and ultimately will go wrong. Yeah, I mean, there are things that regardless of how good your star is, like the Archer Double, like Kaden, like Koga, like they can choose to go wrong and there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. I like to equate it to just like, you just bleed time. Yeah. And it's just a matter of how quick you're bleeding out. Um, like for example, my uh, my run today, uh, I like to count Koga's gym in total turns. Uh, yeah. Kaden was four turns and Koga was seven, and you're just like, eh, it's not great, not great, no. Yeah, you it's can like, just lose thirty to forty seconds there, and there's just no way to avoid it. It's all luck. Uh, 
Uh, and then Aspect finishes of uh, not too far behind. Aspect's only about a minute behind Echi. Uh, and I think we just haven't given, given him enough credit. Like, this run is actually quite strong. That is right around that, like, 301, maybe 302 flat pace. But this, yeah, I think Aspect's run is stronger than uh, we've been giving it credit for. Yeah, no, it, he's, he's been hot on Echi's tail the whole time. Um, so like I said, any of those things going wrong, a bad archer fight, could put Aspect right back in it. So Echi can't really decide safe. on save strats and for you know another 20 minutes or so. And even then, even if he has a clean archer and everything, clean Koga, like a minute? A minute could be covered through this and covered. Pretty, pretty, covered. pretty easily through RNG and the strats themselves. It's just, it's just unfortunate that Aspect doesn't have a very good star because it's going to make justifying one C Naomi and stuff like that a lot. But more if it comes down to it, um, they'll probably have to try it. Yeah, I think, I think it will be. It, this would have been really interesting if their stars were flip flopped because Aspect's in the. A situation where there's a little bit of a bigger gap between him and Headstrong, but you still don't want to get too risky because, you know, you don't want to give up your lead. You haven't wind up with no points this round, so delicate balance here. Gotta I, I agree. see how close the gap is once we get past Koga, and at that point, probably either make a decision to push it all in or just kind of play safe yourself to secure the second place. Yeah, I think that's a good point, especially for these like the these upper echelon matches where getting second place is effectively two points, barring anything really massively going wrong. Yeah, uh, and two points is really valuable in this tournament. Um, through some calculation, just some shared information, it does sound like eight match points through the four rounds should be just good enough to make it to the top cut. Uh, yeah, it's not guaranteed, of... but eight should be good enough. And so getting a second place with two points is probably just as good as a win in most situations. Yeah, it's a pretty um, big swing ending this round with three points or five points. Right. right. If you, if, you know, whoever yeah, loses I, this I race, know they're probably going to have to put in <laughs> a couple more wins to stay in the race for the semifinals. Yeah, you just kind of get you give yourself that like that leeway where if you're on five match points, you just you just say, okay, I have two rounds to get one win. Right. Like you could you could pull that off, and anybody of Aspect's caliber could pull that off. Yeah. Especially if you don't have to get paired up against Echi or Saiyan because you're on five points and they're on six, and you know, okay, I'm not gonna face like the literal best of the best to get and just makes your odds so much better even heading into uh round three so i, I mean it, it, it all depends if that ends up being a consideration but for the match itself one minute is right on the cusp of that threshold where it's like if you're in etchy's position and you're seeing that aspect's about a minute behind. If you fully commit Ooh, to safe strats... Headstrong strat, going into the center on accident. I hate uh, that. <laughs> like, if you fully commit to safe strats, you could leave... your effect. You can leave the door open for aspect to go full risky, win, win all that time back, and then you've left yourself no option to do the optimal strats through the Elite Four, whereas your opponent has done that. Yeah. It's just, yeah, it's just right on that cusp. If you're like two minutes ahead, or even if like you're a minute and a half, you're usually pretty comfortable to commit to safe strats, and it's mostly a tap-in for a victory. But sure. one is, yeah, right on the cusp there. It's like maybe one of the downfalls of this game is that there's not a whole lot you can do to just like play riskier than normal. 
towards the end of the game. Like, there's not many opportunities for that. You're just kind of you're just kind of seeing like where you're bleeding out, and you're like, ah oh, man, Archer again. <laughs> yeah. Like that's like this is dang near perfect speed run in my opinion. But that that is the one thing I would wish there was more of is just opportunities for crazy like turn saving strats towards the end of the run. Is there anything like that in like Fire Red Leaf Green or Heart Gold Soul Silver? Because uh, I because I I ask that as like a legitimate question because I'm not as familiar with those runs. Yeah, I'm not sure. I I'm a fake Pokemon fan and I'm basically only <laughs> super familiar with this game. Listen, as I can tell you all about go. I can tell you all about Scarlet Violet the Teal Mask. It's just hit your high jump kicks. It's fun, fun game. I'm not even a Pokemon fan. I'm just a Let's Go fan. <laughs> are you say Are you saying that your favorite Pokemon is the starter Pikachu? Exactly. Specifically. <laughs> yeah, crazy stress. Skip synchronization. Just, just roll modest. Yeah. That's not late enough, though. I need like, like I really like the. That Pikachu can go for the plus four champion fight, which I know is like default for Eevee, but that's a nice, good stat strat you can go for. But outside of that, there's really nothing, unless you're counting like Hydro Pumps to save two text boxes. <laughs> for a turn well, round. Hydro Pumps can save more than that because you got. Um, first, first of all, you can use Hydro Pump on Blue. Because it saves you the digging in for an next special attack. Yeah, that's like nothing though. I need like a juicy 10 second time save somewhere, you know? I need to <laughs> save a turn. Um, let's see here. Uh what if you what if you uh I've tried this every once in a while. When I've gotten a crit on Sabrina, meaning that I've defeated the Mr. Mime, the turn before the light screen wears off. Uh, I usually just go for Hydro Pump on the Alakazam and hope that that KOs. Has that ever worked for you? Uh, it is not. <laughs> because I wouldn't it's a, expect it, it to. It's a poor range, but you you just go for it. It's just like, oh, because if you, if, you go, if you go for Scald, you've saved no turns yeah. getting that crit. So you're at least trying to give yourself the chance to save a turn off of something good happening. Yeah, I, get, I guess the... the biggest thing you can go for, and we saw Etiquette do it today, is you can skip picking up the full restore in Victory Road and just say, I'm going to get Power of Love on Agatha. Yeah. That's probably the closest we have to something like that. Or Hydro Pumping Hypno in Victory Road. That, like... oh, wait, for, for those counting, uh, Etiquette did get a turn 3 Power of Love on Agatha. That's insane. Yeah, just it had to stall a turn, but got it. Which, I think he said that it does technically save time even being a turn late. Yeah. Absolutely. I notice that aspect does have the uh, the Dodrio out for blue. So no fun, no fire blast shenanigans here. And Echi will be the first to attempt Archer. Okay, any any predictions on how many turns this will likely take? We're looking at five turns. A five turn, yeah, four or five tends to be the average. Three is considered the god archer fights because you can win in three turns if your rival also picks the perfect sequence of moves. And each turn is very again, when it <laughs> when we talk about bleeding time, this is one of those fights where you bleed time for every extra turn. Uh, not the optimal start here. Uh, not Technically not the worst possible. 
Uh, did get the protect from the muck. That's just kind of what you don't want to see because you need to get rid of the muck first and foremost because it does have the move minimize. So that cannot be allowed to uh, show itself. Uh, the worst, the worst uh, is when you get protect Ooh. and then thunderbolt. And it's just like you just wasted a full turn. Uh, the, th the thing that sucks about this fight is basically everything has something that's super effective against Starmie. Mm -hmm. Lots of dark type moves on this. Uh, yeah. Exact same, same start, start on Aspect. Yeah. Weezing protected? Oh, jeez. We're on turn four for Echi. Yeah, this is starting turn four here. Was that a Kadabra I just saw on Ed Strong screen? Whew. We're looking at probably a six turn unless Keybone cooperates here. Yeah. Or so no, Etchy's he's gonna need to fighting. heal. Yeah, that might oh, be a geez. seven turn. Oof. Um, was that turn two for Aspect? Yeah, that was turn two. So we're starting turn five for Etchy. Uh, and we will be starting turn three for Aspect. I didn't see if Etchy Etchy did go for the uh yeah, you have to the heal. There, but Oh yeah. he went for Bone Morang and missed! The rival missed the Bone Morang on the Eradicate, which would have helped massively. Yeah, it, this alone That's is really unfortunate. Back. Aspect might have the lead after this. Etchy could, Etchy could die here. Yeah, because Etchy did have to heal on that again, because he was still in danger of dying to the Sucker Punch. So this is turn seven for Etchy. Oh, uh, Aspect's currently on turn four. Uh, that's going to be executed there. So it looks like Etchy had a seven turn archer fight. Archer's trolling hard right Oh, now. was that also a protect? Yeah. So this is now turn five for Aspect. Dang. So that if Aspect would have had a four turn fight, they would have came out neck and neck. Yeah. Um, probably still made up a little bit of ground there. Just a little bit, because this is going to be a six turn for Aspect. So he did. He but he didn't he really comes out heal one turns. turn ahead, but it wasn't great for either either player. Yeah, we mentioned, uh, sometimes we mentioned the big three uh, in these races. It was uh, kind of discovered that in race formats that it's not necessarily the fights that you can die to normally in any percent, but it's these three, like, high RNG, high bleed out moments. Uh, Archer 2 being the first of them, uh, the others being Caden and Caroline are kind of the three fights that you can't really do anything about and can just cost you a lot of time if you're, you know, if Archer goes one of any which way <laughs> that you just saw, Caden uh, can get a minimize off on you, uh, and Caroline can put you to sleep. Plus, you're trying to hit Hydro Pump at the same time. Just, just the, you, it just leaves the door open for RNG to rear its ugly head on you on those three fights, versus you know. the other four fights, which would be Giovanni, Agatha. Lance and Champion, which are like, oh, if you get crit, you die. Uh, those are more like fatal fights that 2C strats can cover safely. I wonder if at any point we'll see people try to 2C Caroline. Well, if anybody has their routing hats on. Because, <laughs> I mean, it could just prevent you from falling into those bleep loops or freeze loops or anything like that if you have a decent lead it's like that right. fight can go you know start to get pretty catastrophic if you let it but if you just 2c x special attack hydro pump turn one and then even if you miss and get put to sleep or something you can wake yourself up and attack again turn two Uh, I don't believe it splits EXP. I think it's just no. Full yeah, EXP everybody for... who participates in a fight gets full XP. Full EXP. Doesn't matter how many Pokemon are in. And I and I think it wouldn't matter anyways because we we notice that some sometimes you'll uh, you'll candy menu after Caden instead of after uh, Sabrina, and that little bit of EXP that you're missing uh, doesn't matter. 
You end up yeah. leveling up after Charizard instead of Gyarados on Lance, but still hit 53 for Dragonite. At least Headstrong's having a smooth archer. Yeah, I didn't see if that was turn three there. Or if this is um, or if this, yeah, this is, turn is three. this is probably turn four, based on what I'm seeing. Yeah, clean four turn. Yeah, that's what Aspect needed to really close the gap. Unfortunate. Yeah, at least at least one out of three had a normal archer. Jeez. Well, it's kind of that first big hurdle for all the runners. Two of them just uh, maybe uh, grazing the top of that hurdle a little bit more than they would like. Yeah, things quiet down just a little bit more uh, from here. Uh, Sabrina isn't too much of an issue. It's just a matter of what turn do you get light screen on. Archer, believe it or not, could have been much worse. Nobody died. Yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah, yeah. Archer could have been worse. Yep. Yeah, I'm still not salty or anything. Why'd you have a bad one this morning? I had an eight turn because I ran out of heals. Oh, I was watching that actually. I remember what happened. It was it was a disaster waiting to happen. Yeah. Like, I go that into was, that fight uh... and it's like I have no super potions. I need yeah. to not see Thunderbolt yep. from the Electrode, and he Thunderbolts and me twice. Yeah, it's going to Thunderbolt every time if you don't have the potions. Um, what happened was after the Starmie died, uh, I switched into Rapidash and Fire Blasted the Raticate to eliminate it off the field. Yeah, that was smart, I think, how you handled it. Um, crappy situation, but... I think you played that about as well as you can. Yeah. And it just but to just see an eight turn and be like, yeah, that saw that coming from yep. ten miles away. That's why you never get attached to a run. Um oh, personally, that, that personally run... never get attached to a run until the timer stops, but you really can't get attached to a run before Archer. I wasn't even attached to that run. I did you know that I almost DNF'd in Mount Moon? Oh, that geez. run? Like the moment that I didn't catch the, not only didn't catch the Chansey, but then it spaced me out mentally, and I ended up double catching Clefairy. I caught oh. an extra Clefairy that run. Yeah, that's. And after that, start. I was just like, oh, you were pretty close still. Probably by the end. quit. Uh, yeah, I was ahead of etiquette at champ, and if I don't get crit, I would have got second. Yeah, that's uh, that's some good. Uh, with a with like a three oh three high was about the pace I was on after everything that went wrong. But yeah, I was <laughs> I was I was not only not attached to that run, but I, so I somehow kept yeah. that going. I think I everyone <laughs> kind of fixates on the Blaine time because it's just it makes sense. Like that's when you really know your pace. But I think some people do make the mistake of getting attached when they say that their time is good at Blaine, but like, no, you have so much ahead of you. Do not get attached to there. You mean you mean you don't get attached when you see a sub seven minute rival one, which I also had today. I don't even look at my clock until I'm at <laughs> until I'm in forest. <laughs> my first split is on that Pidgey fight in forest. All right, chat. How many how many splits do you use? <laughs> do you use do you use the legendary split for every trainer? I'm or... still waiting for everyone to catch up to my splitting method, where I try to split at points where it separates catching sections from fight sections. I think it's the best way to actually see times that mean anything. Like like after moon is like the common one. Yeah. Like, after moon, uh, how about this? After moon, enter boat. Yes, uh, I split enter boat. Enter boat, uh, enter tunnel, exit tunnel. I, I do you one and better. I, I split enter boat, and then I split camper drew before route 10. Okay. And I dig that. Tunnel. Enter tunnel, exit tunnel. Um... Yeah. 
Then it gets a little tricky because like Tower is just like one Pokemon though. I split four of the Jesse and James fight in Tower when you're going up the stairs. <laughs> and then I split entering Route 17 after Snorlax. You know what would be fun? Give your splits to all of our runners and tell them to split for it. And for each time they forget to split, they get a problem. Oh, they forget a lot. <laughs> <laughs> they look yeah, at the like, only thing wait, that's... enter boat? <laughs> the only thing that really matters is that you're splitting on the high five in gyms. What? But like, you don't get the high five on the not gym fights. So how are, how are you how are you splitting like hideout? Um, on fade out. If there's no high yeah, five. But... Just do something else that makes sense. But yeah. you can't not split on the high fives. I mean, but the high, but then there's but then you're splitting differently for that's fine. Gems versus everything else. Yeah, gems are different. Making you than more other likely to split incorrectly. I'd never split incorrectly on a gym. You don't split for Misty on high five. What's up with that? I don't split. I don't split for Misty at all. Then, you, then you're only doing seven high fives. I'm actually only doing six high fives because I don't split for Surge Wait. either. Wait, <laughs> I was gonna say which one are you missing there? I don't split for Misty because I split exit Mount Moon and then I split at the end of Nugget Bridge because there's catches that can happen in between those. And there's like menus that can happen before or after Misty sometimes. So I just lump so, that all together. So for after Nugget Bridge, as it like fade out on that rocket? Yeah. And then I don't split Surge because it's such a short gap or there's not really any variance in what's happening there. Like, but you I know if you have more splits that you can have a lower sum of best? Some of best is meaningless in this game, though. I'm gonna look up my sum of best right now. I'm opening I, live split as we speak. I keep a pretty similar um, split philosophy across every category and game I play. I try to split every six to ten minutes. So my sum of best is two thirty-five thirty-eight. Thank you. I know it's great. Um, and actually, I kind of agree with that. Like having like you know splits in reasonable spots yeah. that so it's you know it's not too close together but it's not too troll do you know what the wor i you know what i think is the worst split i have across any game uh it is the area zero split in scarlet violet because there's a there's a section where i split after beating arvin and then you go into area zero and there's like six wild battles where there's no fade out mm -hmm. so the next fight is the Turo or Sada fight and it is nearly a 45 minute split Whoa. it's almost it's like almost it's a little bit closer to 40 it's like almost a 40 minute like there's no trainer battles there's no good like fade outs there's like nothing that makes sense to split for. So it's like, it is like the two most important things back to back, but they're like 40 minutes apart. Yeah, I think anything, like any split shorter than five minutes or so is just not really telling you anything. And then, yeah, longer than 10 minutes. It just gets weird. I don't know. So, so that, how often do you split in the E4? E4, I only split for Agatha and Champion. Because it's like, again, it's like Lorelei, Bruno, Agatha, like your healing menus are going to be in between different fights depending on what happens in the run. But by Agatha, everything is consistent, like from end of Victory Road to Agatha. Like you'll have had a consistent like number of heals usually. So it all kind uh -oh. of matches back uh -oh. up. Uh-oh. We just got minimized on Etchy's screen. Okay. Oh, and he hits through it immediately. Did he get poisoned, though? He did. Yeah. Um, Could be worse, but... Terrible. 
No protect from Beedrill, too. Okay. So I guess it was Toxic turn 1, Heal, Minimize turn 2. Yeah. So 4 turn. Yeah, you got, yeah you got, 4 turn Caden is fine. It's fine. It just gets scary when you see Minimize yeah. like that. And Aspect's turn. Protect. Good fight. Um, and that'll be fine. Yep. I have gotten protect double protect one, here you're... recently, though. Double protect that actually worked. Oh, I got double protected uh, in my tournament race that was on the on GDQ Hotfix. And I, like, freaked out at it on the screen. Yeah, every time I'll see the double protect, and I'll be like, oh, that's not going to work. And, and then it does work. And then I have to find myself pressing more buttons. I'm like, oh, okay. Cool. Fun things. Uh, and she gets an extra uh, toxic at the top of the Koga fight. Yeah, Aspect making up a little bit of ground here. Yeah, I think Aspect had a three turn uh, Caden fight. Yep. yep. Another protect from, from Venomoth here. Yeah, actually able to scald pretty easily on these things. Peace of mind bonus, not having to worry about Psychic PP. Another and protect Golbat from Golbat. Getting trolled a little bit. Yeah, this has not been the kindest. Uh, turn one protect, though, from Aspect. Yeah. All right, we'll, we'll Edgy see protect on every single Mon. He does not, but still pretty abysmal. That's a 12 turn Koga's Gym for Etchy. Uh, again, that bleeds actually quite a lot of time. Uh, no protect from the Venomoth, so this is starting to look pretty fast from Aspect. He's actually gaining quite a bit of time. No protect from the Golbat. He's just one turn away from an eight turn. Koga's gym as Headstrong starts the Caden fight. And we finally see a protect out of Koga here. So this ends up being still excellent. A nine turn Koga's gym. So Aspect had three turns fewer spent. So that probably ends up being about 18 to 20 seconds saved. Yeah, I mean, just. I don't know where the desync is at, but just based on the time that we're seeing on the screen, there's a f about a 40 second difference there between the two of them. Meanwhile, Headstrong had a bit of a cleaner. Uh, it was it was still toxic, but into protect, so no minimize, uh, but still not the uh, not the cleanest of Cadens. A five turn Caden here. Yeah, the, the desync is uh, Etchy started about 17 seconds later. So he gets basically like those 17 seconds back. So it's probably still about a minute between the two runners. Okay, yeah. So, I mean, I'm really curious to see what Etchy's going to do here. Because he probably could mostly play it safe and still be fine. But he'd be making it a very close race if Aspect goes 1C everything. I know one of the I... considerations for the top runners is that, like, if you're close to PB or you're close to world record, you're kind of throwing your race strats out the window until you know you can't get, like, record. So there's still merit to, like, race the clock. Yeah, I mean, Echi's probably a good couple minutes behind his PB, so he doesn't have, have that to grapple with, really. I think with the I think with the co uh, but between Koga and uh, Archer being as sloppy as they were, 
Um, I don't think he's quite on his uh, 2 259 PV pace. I think that just bled way too much time yeah, for that to be a serious consideration. I mean, we were talking about like high 300 at best at Blaine, so with that Archer, he's definitely looking at 301. 301, 302. I know. Which, I mean, is still excellent. Oh, of course, yeah. <laughs> like, don't, don't get us wrong. 302 is still just so, so strong. I mean, remember Barrier Blitz? Was that three years ago already? It was, yeah. Three summers ago. Goodness. And I think Etchy had the fastest time there, and it was a 3.02.30 yeah, at the about time. Right. And now everyone's just like, yeah, I'll just get 2.59 in a race format. Yeah, no big deal. Listen, that was... We all had a collective mental barrier we were trying to break through there. And, and, oh, and do you wait. know who the first person to break through the 302 barrier was? I forget. Yeah, my, I think it's this. Uh, I think this this lad named Kerbis 54. Oh, that's right. That's right. The first ever 301. Yeah, actually, is two controllering. Samuel. Yeah. Uh, nice little strat here where you don't have to use your X special attack. You can just go for a Psychic, which crit anyways. Oh, uh, psychic Stomp uh, almost always KOs unless your special attack's pretty bad. Oh, uh, extra... whoa, he got, he got ratioed after the fight. Okay. <laughs> I don't know that I've ever seen that before. I, I don't think I have either. And Sometimes it's funny Joy-Cons do weird he things there. When, you, when you try to like hold a certain direction, it'll like do a spin. I guess he just spun up into the, the pad. Yeah, well, it's, it's kind of weird because you would think the character would... <laughs> knew it was going to happen the moment the battle started. <laughs> it's funny because Echi did talk to Samuel without getting ratioed or the explanation point. Comes out of the battle and... I don't know, maybe his position updated by a sub-pixel and was technically... Yeah, it might have been on one of those pad. similar things where, like, you enter a battle and as soon as you're done, there's a Pokemon that was spawned right next to you and you immediately enter the encounter. That type of thing. Um, Aspect also two controller Samuel, so maybe indicating that they're just playing safe for the second place they're, at this point, which would not be a bad decision. I think they're both playing nice where it's like eh, if we, you know if we both play safe then you know we both get first and second i should go in one c geo though could be interesting it's a little risky but i mean Ooh. vast majority of the time like it's fine you're you're just trying to avoid a crit here Ooh. i don't like that Oh my god. Oof. That Oof. was scary. That, yeah, I I saw what you I'm, saw. It was like, wait, 37 HP? Are you sure you live this? Knowing Etchy, I'm assuming that was calculated, but... Are you sure? Yikes. One of the things I haven't seen yet this tournament is the Rapidash living via Power of Love, because it can happen on this fight, by the way. So that would have swung the race right there. So I have to assume oh, yeah, that she absolutely. had that count out. I don't think he would have taken a risk like that. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Aspect is playing safe, so... Barring a, a major screw up for Mechi here. Although, yeah, with that defense, weird things could happen. We're going to have to check on that. You I'm know what? trusting I'll... Echi implicitly, but I'm going to check on that at some point. If somebody can else can somebody it. in chat uh, just go back and see what Echi's defense stat was? Uh, I'll pull up the I'll pull up the calcs because I, I do have them in my notes. Oh, 
Uh, Headstrong just opting to save. I respect it. Just go for the one controller. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I believe if you lose to Samuel, you actually don't have to fight him again. Because the first trainer is, like, walked forward. And then you go on the blue spinning tiles and you get to skip him completely. Ninety two defense at level forty nine. Let's scroll down. Ninety two defense. 92 oh, that's is low. Really bad. That's that's minimum, actually. Uh, that's as low as I have it to go. Uh, that earthquake could have done forty damage on its not highest roll, like on the fifteen and sixteen roll. So for it to only do, I think it was like 34, 36 points of damage is actually one of the lower rolls. So. All right, I'm never trusting Echi again. That is you incredible. Like Echi was actually really likely to die to that earthquake roll. Yeah, plot armor. And it looked like again. the earthquake low rolled. Somebody please at stop that this moment. man. Yeah, 92 defense is the minimum defense. That is a zero IV defense stat. And I just gotta say that. Echi is successfully dodging me every round, and if he wins this race, he's going to dodge me again, because there's not going to be a way for me to get a round three matchup with him, I don't yeah, think. True. Even if I win my race. This is rigged. If I don't get put up with Echi in the semifinals... I'm rooting for I know you someone's guys. pulling strings <laughs> behind the scenes. I'm rooting for you. Hey, listen, we have the slot machine now instead of... Because, you know, everybody loves the wheel, but now we have the slot machine for draws, which I think was a big, big hit. Uh, I think we could, uh, you know, I think we might know somebody who knows something about coding machinery, uh, and we could uh, we can rig those slots, right? Okay, listen, chat, would anybody be mad... If we put Kerbis and Echi in the same slot machine. Listen, I'm telling you, somebody needs to humble him, and I will be the most effective at it. I guarantee you. We need this. We we definitely we need to need come together as a community. We definitely need a Pika player to humble him, because if it's an Eevee player, he'll just be like, ah, well, like the Eevee got lucky. You know, he'll 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 find it he'll find a he'll find it out to that. Yeah, do you think I mean <laughs> Gervis, do you wanna be in the same semifinal as Saiyan and Echi, or just like one of them at a time? No, I'm scared of Saiyan. Oh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what I Saiyan, need to do is Saiyan. Saiyan is cracked right now. Uh Saiyan did have the fastest time in round one Ooh, and Aspect is died. Probably well on his way. Oh no! That would have been on the rival fight too. Yeah, it didn't revive. Rapidash. Oh, didn't revive the the Rapidash. Still ahead of Headstrong, but now that gap has has narrowed quite a bit. Yeah, to Ooh, a scary this, level. This might actually now, be close. Hold yeah, on. now Aspect is not really going to be able to play too safe here. Although they have similar strength, um, Starmies. Yeah, actually, just going for 1C. He's just flexing at this point. <laughs> yeah, second place is huge here, so... Can't afford any big screw-ups from Aspects from here on out. Still, oh, no, still a good gap, so Aspect can play a, there's safe. There's a second controller out for Echi. Oh, okay. I think he brought it out after he started the fight. I, I usually, uh... I usually summon the second controller when I'm in that gap and not riding Rapidash. So the second controller is probably like off the screen. Yeah, so this is where it gets a little scary because Headstrong can kind of watch to see what Aspect does and if Aspect chooses to play safe, Headstrong can go a little risky. It's really nothing for her to lose. 
on that end. I think she should do whatever possible to close the rest of that gap. But Aspect may choose to go a little risky too on certain things. This is what I love. You get to see a little bit of their decision making in a high pressure situation. But Echi can absolutely just go completely safe at this point, not really worry about it. See if Echi goes for a pump range here. Not really a risky thing, just something he can afford to do. Yeah, he's gonna go for it. And gets it. Good stuff. That's what a good Starmie can do for you. That's one of the few turn saves it can actually do in the end game. Yeah. Just hit the range. It's free, actually. It's just that easy. It's that easy. Oh, Echi gets the good uh, spinner cycle there. Yeah, for Echi, it would take a pretty disastrous, like, E4 death. It's funny that Echi screwed up on Rival 5 in the last round, and then he got his opponent to do it this round. Yeah, although I think he was pretty well in the clear anyways. But that definitely lets him breathe a little sigh of relief. Um, he just needs to... Not just lock it down in too much. Just lock it in. Just play safe. Do everything correctly. Don't use your ether on the wrong move. Even that you can work around. I think. Uh, you can. Uh, you can. You'll just get a bunch of turnarounds. Yeah. I mean, I did. I did the. I did the E4 run back with no ether. But knowing you have no ether, you just start super effectiveing like everything right away. But I do think it is possible. Like you just Thunderbolt Cedra, you Scald, Aerodactyl, and Charizard. Yeah, aspects uh, don't you can, see. You can probably do the, the Dash, etc. Probably the smart move here. The Star Me is just not very good. It's going to be a bad range, I think. <laughs> split I split every batch check, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure that'll definitely get the Curva stamp of approval. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Aspect gets the range. Headstrong also too seeing. Um... I suppose there is also just an average time to play for here. Maybe Headstrong just not wanting to drag down her average too much in case of a tiebreaker for the semifinals. True, because we were we were saying like eight match points should get you there. Uh, the tiebreaker is uh, average time uh, throwing out your worst run. So like if you have a DNF that doesn't count against your average time. Uh, but two would. Uh, and for, again, a lot of these runners, like, if you're getting 304 off the cuff, uh, it shouldn't be too much of an issue. Uh, you can afford to have that one really poor run, uh, kind of like what I did earlier today. Like, I don't think my 315 is going to be accounted into that average. Um, but it is something to consider. Where it's where you don't want to have two bad runs to really drag you down. Yeah, and it's hard to say. Like if we're going to a tiebreaker situation, like you're going to be comparing to another pretty good runner if you're fighting to get one of those last slots for top nine. So who knows what kind of average time that will take? So I don't blame her for wanting to play it a little safer, and because she's still on good pace. Oh gosh, talking to Rapid Ash two yeah. times instead of the trainer though. <laughs> yeah, talking to Rapid Ash for Headstrong. Uh, Aspect actually missed the uh, double Thunderbolt range. Kind of had a max min roll, where that first that first Thunderbolt did over half, but the second didn't kill. 
Uh, really annoying, but didn't get punished for it. I didn't see that he got put to sleep or anything. Yeah. Super annoying, but might lose a turn to it. Uh, dodging Hypnosis for Headstrong. Uh, in this case, you're going to see Headstrong switch over to Scald to uh, cover that. But at least it's advertised that you did less than half damage on the first Thunderbolt. Definitely that has happened like... to me maybe one too many times. Like, unless I know that it's that, like, <laughs> I have a good special attack to uh, get a two shot Thunderbolt range, usually I'm probably just gonna use Scald, anyways. Seems like actually a trade off for his really good special attacks. Neither of his defenses seem very good. Yeah, that's a lot. That's, that's more damage than you would think. Alright, Aspect goes for Alexa Skip here. It's good. Good he got the repel wear off just before attempting that. Yeah. There's nothing worse than getting that text box before. And it probably happened in a weird spot because of the Rival 5 death. Uh, you've kind of you've had to use more steps than you normally do. So I'm sure that might have caught him a little off guard. Usually you get that text box after Caroline. So to get it before Alexa Skip is in a very odd spot to see that. Whew. Headstrong, I think, might be one of the most brave Alexa Skippers. Because I always see like her character just going straight north and then just makes that turn at the last second. Slick with it. Aspect having no trouble on Caroline. Yeah, I think he can go pretty safe. Um, it doesn't look like that big of a difference between him and Headstrong, but you don't really need much of a gap to just play Ooh. a safe D4. There's a, yeah, there's she's a missed, lose a little bit of time. Yeah, missed Hydro Pump into Lovely Kiss is like the worst. It's You've been punished for missing your move, so you actually missed... Uh, it, it took two extra turns. Yeah, I think this might make it just comfy enough because there's not that much time remaining to bleed out after Caroline. It's kind of the, the third biggest RNG uh, nonsense moment. So certainly we'll see Etchy just kind of tap it in from here, just use the 2C uh, safe strats to guarantee a, a pretty strong time. Probably looking at still 301 pretty comfortably from Etchy. Yeah. Okay, so Aspect and Headstrong about a a row of boulder pushes apart here. Yeah, which is I I think forty seconds. I think that's yeah, like forty. I don't know. Count them with me. It's like <laughs> I don't even know how many boulder pushes it is. It's a lot. Too many. I don't know why you can't just like bulldoze that one boulder just like straight through. I don't know why you can't just hold left and push the boulder like every other Pokemon game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like the I feel like the Rapidash is definitely strong enough to just like push it along in stride. Hoo-ha. That would that would make sense to me anyways. Hoo-ha. Urbis, have you ever gotten faint? No, I don't believe it's real. Yeah, I don't think it's you real. You can't convince it, me. It's not. I don't think it exists. And you, and no one should listen to what Randall has to say about the subject. It, it definitely does not exist. Yeah, it's just not real. Uh, only only, a, real fool, if you only a fool would believe that faint even yeah. exists. It requires you believing in it for it to ever happen. Yeah. If you don't believe it, then it, it can't even happen in the first place. Yeah, 
146 special attack for Etchy. I think that's good enough. <laughs> that's, uh, that's pretty high. Uh, I'll be curious to see what the speed stat is for Aspect. If you, if you remember from all that way long ago when he had uh, higher than maximum speed. Yeah, so what do we need here for Agatha? I think 154 is the speed tie and 55 yeah. is the guarantee. Yeah. yeah, if you're skipping full restore, uh, that is another sign of the safe strats. Because the full restore is only used on Agatha um, for the paralysis and heal at the same time. But if you're doing a two controller strat, you tend to not need it. Because you're attacking the Arbok before it even gets a chance to glare you. And that's what makes these safe strats actually so incredible, is that... The use of the second controller, while it is slower to do the fights that way, you actually save back a lot of the time uh, in skipping, you know, small little things here and there. You're skipping menus in between fights to heal. You're skipping the full restore pickup. You're skipping buying X defense and X special defense in the last shop. And you just compound all of those small time saves our love for back Etchy. into uh back into the safe strats and yeah power of love from etchy here and good thing because his defense was a little brutal. really bad his defense was bad enough that a crit crunch could actually have killed him yeah. full. and if he would have gotten defense drops and did not get power of love he could have been in trouble there that would have been a 2c situation for sure yeah I'm actually surprised to not see him 2C uh, off the cuff here. Yeah, I am a little bit too. But considering that risk he took on Geo, I guess we should not be surprised. About yeah, anything. that's true. Always full of surprises. Or he was really banking on the rich get richer. I respect it though. Etchy is not afraid of the moment. He knows the plot armor he has. He knows what he can get away with. The, the man was just in New Orleans the last 48 hours doing not speedrunning. And then he just comes back to Chicago and sits down at his PC and says, I can get a 301. No practice. He was just playing Let's Go in his mind on the plane. You know, I, th I thought about playing Let's Go on the Plane once, and then I thought about the side throws. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> hope you have an empty seat next to you if you're going to be doing that. Uh, like, like I said, I thought about it. Uh, I, ju I just missed the level up on Aspect Screen, but it sounds like you didn't gain any more speed AVs, unfortunately, so it's just going to end up in that, like, 150 range. Yeah. Doesn't impact the, the run, really. Anyway. Uh, say, it is interesting you know. to see Bruno turnarounds. Uh, that is because of the extra X items that were needed for the refight yeah. of Rival 5. Uh, so that put the uh, that friendship threshold just over the top of the fight early. Yeah, so actually just cleaning up with 2C for the last two fights here. It's a matter of what time he gets, but... What? Okay, so actually, actually it got a, what, a 305 in the first round? Yes, and that was with a rival 5 death. So yeah, he's going to take his average down nicely here. Yeah, I don't think he's going to be too much in danger because at six match points, uh, you're pretty much in the clear with a single second place. Like a fast second place, which obviously would be capable of. So if we're if so we're calling these races bloodbath death matches, the round three race with all of the people who won their first two, that's gonna be a scary one. Yeah, um, but it's not gonna be a high pressure one. 
thankful no, for them. Like, true. you can lose that race and be like, that's fine. Like, But that's where you really get to flex. If you win that race... Put me in a situation where you're, you know, the favorite to win at that point. Yeah, so that race, I mean... But yeah, once the, you not make to it spoil, into the... Not to spoil too much, but it would be uh, Echi, Saiyan, and Amber. And, and I mean, I suppose you know the, that... the more points you have, the more likely you are to get favorable opponents for your semifinal match as well. So, right, because the, the overall seeding will matter. Yeah, I mean, obviously, once you get into the final, like, nothing that happened before means anything at that point, but... Yeah, get, winning three races in a row would uh, certainly almost guarantee you uh, the number one seed going into seed, semifinals. Yeah. yeah. Or, you know, at least being top three. Which is all that really matters. So I assume we're randomly drawing based on, well, I don't know, maybe it'll be sorted out numerically. Everyone will have different values. <laughs> Yeah, we, all we know is that there are only three runners that are going to end on six match points up after this, and those three are pairing up against each other. That that's going to be. Whew, that <laughs> remember this was this was already kind of like a finals rematch from last year with Etchy and Headstrong. Well, round three we're going to have Etchy and Amber in the same race. Uh, with with Saiyan kind of spoiling that there. party, Mr. As, Mr. Like, Sub Three, as the uh, I would say I would say the odds-on favorite for this is Saiyan as of now. I would say so. The way he's playing lately is pretty ridiculous. He's had yeah. multiple Sub Threes in just like the last week and a half alone. But I I wouldn't count Etchy's plot armor out, and I think Amber is a is playing as good as anybody right now. I mean, that's probably your three favorites for the finals. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense that those three have uh, won their first two races, for sure. Ooh, Air Slash missed the Rapidash, and now Echi has to just stand there with the Rapidash for the rest of the fight. That does lose about 20 to 25 seconds, unfortunately. Oh no, I'm gonna win the race, but 25 <laughs> seconds slower. <laughs> yeah, he definitely needs the the average. Uh, that's gonna that's gonna hurt his average just by you know, yay, about eight seconds uh, in the long run. Travesty. Rich get richer. What can we say? She's psychicking the slow bro, losing his focus. Get Ooh, together, see, man. That's gonna hurt him a little bit more. Stop typing. But that's the thing. Like, if Rapid Ash is out, the, all of a sudden the Pokemon can come out in a different order, and you gotta keep your focus. I mean, that could be the difference between beating Saiyan and Amber and not beating Saiyan and Amber. You know what? You know what I think would be interesting, because a lot of our runners through this tournament have had enough uh, mental capacity to play the game and type in chat. What if we, t what if we ban them from chat just for round three? I think that would make Etchy play worse. He has to, uh, <laughs> he has to let it out somehow. He can't sit there alone in silence. Don't. No. That would definitely be a I need to scream and I have no mouth moment. Absolutely. <laughs> Amber does it too. Uh, in the end, it does look like Etchy is going to be right. Uh, he's going to be a 302 high. Uh, just so everybody knows that he started at the 17 second mark of the run. So. Whatever it will say on screen on Fade Black, just subtract 17 seconds, and that should quite comfortably be a 302 mid or high for Echi, who goes on to win his round two race. And will be sitting on six match points, getting ready for an absolute dead heat of a round three.
I mean, Meanwhile, still not the... too far between our other two runners. Yeah, I mean, they've both been on the same fight since that rival mishap. Yeah, Aspect should, uh, assuming no etchy like mistakes, get through here cleanly. Yeah. Probably with, uh, I don't know, 305, 306 of some kind. Yeah, I'll be close to that. So about a 302.40 or so for uh, Echi uh, on the delay. But yeah, Aspect starting and Headstrong just a cutscene behind right now. Uh, Aspect with the two controller strats, again, to go safely. You don't want to end up like myself earlier today, being in the lead, going one controller, getting crit by Air Slash, losing it all on Champion. Yeah, you almost had to do it though, right? Yeah, close. I was I was committed to 1C strats through the end game to even take the lead. So to go into the box to retrieve something to two controller, I would have actually just lost the lead on that. So yeah. it was it was definitely forced at the end. Uh, we see Air Slash hit uh, the Rapid Ash, and that should end up being okay because Quick Attack should uh, target the Rapid Ash and KO it and does making for a clean finish here. Uh, Headstrong's got the Lapras out. I haven't seen Lapras on the uh, Eevee side in a while here. Uh, in this case, Air Slash actually targets the Starmie. And Headstrong really guaranteeing that this plus four Thunderbolt is gonna KO Pidgeot uh, instead of going for uh, what could be, oh no, there's a, it's a death, it's a Solar Beam death. Oh, jeez. Or was it, or was it, uh, or was it like a pedal dance? No, oh, input eaten. Thunderbolt misclick. So, you know, Headstrong, oh, no. Headstrong played it safe, just playing for the decent time and is going to be rewarded here by, sometimes the person in front of you just makes a mistake and you wind up with two points for it. Oh, it's that's a really such a, a terrible way to go. Wow, you got a, you know, an eaten input. It's unfortunate, um, but you know, you want to stay focused, stay. Yeah, give your, give if, if Aspect sure wants to, right if Aspect wants to go through it from here, it will end up yeah. at like about a three eighteen because it does take about twelve ish minutes. Yeah, to so get back I guess, through the E4. I mean, a 318 versus just a DNF, it's going to have the same impact on Aspect's averages for the, the tiebreakers, so... Yeah, because we do don't, throw don't out blame the, you. the lowest one. Um, yeah, that is, a, that is a tough way to end in what was an excellent race overall. Uh, Aspect pushing uh, Echi through a lot of the race, wasn't even too yeah. far behind. Um, had a pretty good... Uh, Pretty comfortable run going would have ended up in the 306s or like 306 low. Uh, but yeah, just a rotten finish to the end there. Uh, GG's to Headstrong finishing up as well and we'll end up in second place. And we'll have to still wait and see if this ends up as one or two match points, but likely going to be two. Uh, let's welcome in our winner, Echi. Now two for two in the tournament. You're undefeated in two years of Let's Going in this tournament. You've done eight total rounds. You've won every single race. Do you think you can be stopped, Echi? Do you think there's anybody in this tournament that actually can get to your level? Or is the plot armor strong? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean, I can't win every race. Eventually something will happen. Uh, this race was really close. Like, all three of us had, like, really close times going to Blaine. Uh, so obviously just like slightly different things happening in the last hour, just unlucky in fights. I got pretty unlucky in Archer and uh, yeah, that was gross. really, had, what was the other cringe thing? Oh, Koga's gym was really cringe too. But other than that, uh, I, I got, I, I, I got I just incredibly lucky with those two. Well, time. Archer 2 went pretty bad for me as well, but mm -hmm. uh, Koga was nice for once. Yeah, it looked like your Koga was like an eight turn Koga mm, gym yes, nine versus turn, Echi's nine turn 12. Gym. Yeah. Oof. I got one protect. Yeah, aspect. I know. I know that was rotten luck to have a dropped input at the uh, very, I'm, very end. But I mean, how? Not even that. But were you with that five run? as well?
I completely forgot to to revive. I'm used to uh I'm not used to it. As of late I've been going for one C's mostly. Um but I was pretty happy with the run overall. I would like for a while. didn't feel right? like getting in the ball. Yeah. <laughs> No, you was played, it like you a three oh two? If I didn't mess up, rival. Your catch sections all went pretty well. There wasn't really anything egregious that happened for any of you, I don't think. Mm -hmm. Even at before the rival five, it was it was pretty close. Still, it wasn't even like that far off. So, yeah, it was like a minute difference between you and Aspect at that point. Yeah, at, th at that point, that's when things get kind of scary because like, uh, if Aspect just like does the aggressive one controller strat or everything, and I don't, then it gets really close and really sketchy. Yep. And it's just it just puts the pressure on you to a point where you're like, you make one, you know, if you get nervous because right, someone's hot right. on your tail, it's just so much more likely that you're going to make a mistake that kills you. So it's like so the, what... the fear factor more than like the actual, <laughs> you know, fact that they could even catch up to you. So let me ask the two of you, since you were so close, how much were you watching each other's gameplay during your own and how much did that affect you uh throughout the run were you having to do any extra decision making when it came to safe versus risky um i was checking pretty often uh, every once in a while i'll just click over and see mostly because i wanted to chat in the chat but uh i would still look <laughs> too but yeah i mean the, my, my answer is the same as like last term where it's like uh how everyone else does doesn't really impact my decision making or play until Agatha, pretty much. <laughs> or really, until Giovanni. Chat. Giovanni's more accurate, yeah. Actually, loves you guys so much, he can't stay away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's he was hitting the slots in the chat. I, uh, I would have loved to uh, go risky, <laughs> but my star was so trash with special attack that there wasn't a whole yeah. lot I could do. We were saying it would have been a lot more interesting if uh, the two of you had swapped stars. <laughs> that could have gotten scary. Yeah, I hate... I, I always get these really good stars in like the most useless <laughs> situations, like a tournament race where I clearly cannot PB at all by that point. <laughs> yeah, like my Naomi was an eight out of sixteen. Dragonite was a twelve out of sixteen. Oof. Yeah, you had you had all your stats uh, them, poured into speed. You like, did you hit couldn't... both, of them and you probably would not have if you went one C. That's just how. These yeah, things exactly, work. exactly. <laughs> uh, we also welcome in Headstrong finishing second place today. Uh, with a 307 headstrong. How was your run? I know you were a little bit uh, off uh, Etchy's pace in that run, uh, but how did you feel things went for you today? I felt like I honestly played okay, but the game just told me no. <laughs> I'm yeah. pretty sure that Eevee didn't get a single AV in attack, special attack, and I think I saw one in speed. I was pretty much running minus everything. <laughs> What is it with like, the Eevees this this tournament? I feel like they're like, just getting really bad at everything. I, at 18 for Boat Rival, I was outsped. I was not expecting that. I was missing like every range possible with attack. <laughs> and then my star had 112 special at 46. Yeah, not <laughs> ideal. So that didn't help anything. Like, I feel like I only made, like, maybe a minute of issues on my own end on top of... And then just the rest was just terrible RNG. So many things spawned on top of me. Yeah, you, there was a bunch of stuff you were just tripped over, like in like, Rock Tunnel, I think. Oh, Rock Tunnel, Mount Moon, everywhere. Yeah. Like, I felt like I just couldn't catch a break with anything. That's one of my least favorite things that... Like when it happens like four, five, six times in the same run, I'm just like, come on, man. Yeah. Give me a break. And then my catches too were just like, like they were fine. And then all of a sudden they weren't fine. And I was just like, okay. Yeah, everything up to like Route 10 was like really smooth for everybody. And then I don't know, there wasn't like too, too bad luck, I don't think, for the catching, I but. I had both Graveler and Rhyhorn break out of the Yeah, we yeah. pointed that out. Both yeah. had 90% chances, too. And then both Headstrong and I hit an optional. Yeah, I hit the, uh, the Bellsprout optional on the way. Yeah, I hit, I hit the Bellsprout yeah. optional as well. <laughs> I caught Magmar. <laughs> you did catch Magmar. <laughs> uh. 
And I was really hoping I didn't have to, because, like, things were perfectly fine. I had, like, 56 Pokemon planned at one point. I was like, okay, things are going fine. I got three things at Route 10. Right. And then just nothing started showing up. No Ghastly, no Cubo, never got Vulpix. <laughs> Aspect and Chansey had a little love affair this I time. I had four Chanseys. <laughs> <laughs> Two on Route I... 17, one in Mount Moomin I caught, but it didn't it wasn't happy about being caught. Um, I... and then one just before Starmie. Oh sorry. I saw oh, a Kangaskhan that Route I had to 21. <laughs> There was a Kangaskhan I had to dodge. Uh and then on my way to Saffron, there was a Kadabra and a Porygon in the little patch. <laughs> oh, I saw the Kadabra. I didn't see the Porygon. That's the por crazy. Yeah, the Porygon was behind the Kadabra. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I looked over. I'm like, oh, that was a cadabra as you hit the gates. Oh, that's yeah, no, funny. it was we'll, both of them. We'll have to go back and clip that. That should make the uh, uh, that should that should make the uh, the round clips. Uh, and again, if anybody clipped anything good, make sure to drop it in the clips Discord because uh, our organizers will definitely put something together before we roll the slot machine for those round three uh, matches. Well, yeah, maybe, uh, maybe that was part of your problem, Headstrong. The uh, the Porygon appearances are known to be curses. Pretty cursed, yeah. Yeah, I, honestly, if I didn't have terrible uh, Pokeball count, I, I partly thought about catching them, but I only had, like, two Great Balls left from <laughs> everything going so poor. <laughs> like, I even accidentally caught my star in a Great Ball, which ended up working out. I was going to catch the coughing with Great Balls, but... I caught the star with a great ball instead. <laughs> well, GG's to uh, all the runners today. Uh, again, yeah. GG to Echi for the oh, victory. GG. You've got quite the round three match coming up, it looks like. So best of luck there, right? <laughs> Woo. Uh, but we are not on to round three just yet. We still have plenty of Swiss round two matches still yet to go all this week. Here are some of the upcoming matches. We got Sandy uh, Kermis. Uh, you got some somewhere to be in just a couple days time. Uh, and Tucker, that should be a fun one. That's coming up on Tuesday. Chrysosaurus, Iron, and Burner will have their match on Wednesday. And then later that day, it's Diego, Mocha Jones, and Yasko. Plenty of uh, matches still to come. Still plenty of points on the line, and I'm sure plenty of clips to be had in these matches because they have all been fun this round. Any final thoughts, Kerbis, or anyone before we sign off for the day? Um, I got to practice a little bit. I got to get ready. <laughs> Just get lucky. Yeah, okay, true. Good point. <laughs> all you got to do, Kerbis, is kinda, you press down for bag. And then you mash A to throw the raspberry at the Pokemon. No, no, and no, then no, you're no. Gonna... See, no, I can't listen to you. Don't talk to me until after Tuesday. Ooh. You're feeding me bad info. Oh, wow. Uh, okay, yes, very bad info, yes. <laughs> I think the Kerbis etchy grudge match is something I'm looking forward to in the <laughs> yeah, future. Yeah, you dodge me, dodge me for another round, but I'm coming for you. All Don't right, worry. man. I'll right, see you I'm in ready. the finals, boy. <laughs> Well, thank you everybody for watching. Again, GG's to all of our competitors today. Make sure to tune in for our upcoming matches for this Tuesday and Wednesday. Have a great weekend, everybody. Uh, we will see you later. Slots, hit them one last time before you go.